Say it with me. I'll call one tag. I'll call one tag. I'll call one tag. ATFCU is an equal housing lender. Spring is here and it's time to party. Who wants to spend hours upon hours on the smoker while everyone else is having a good time? Nobody. That's who. Call Dead End Barbecue at 865-414-9417 and let a top 100 barbecue restaurant handle the food so you can enjoy your party. The school year is getting close to ending, which means graduation parties and end of the year celebrations. Don't be stuck on the grill. Pick up the phone and call 865-414-9417 and ask for Leah. Dead End Barbecue. Your catering search is over. Deep down the middle, has got his man, and he's gone. Jason Swain, touchdown. It's time for the Swain event. Guess what time it is, my, my, my time. You can check your iPhone, better say it's our time. With your host, Jason Swain. My man. Real sports talk for the real sports fan. All you chumps are going to bow when I whip him. It's time for the Swain event, fueled by Dead End Barbecue. Give me two to the and a red flag. Swain Event and SwainEvent.com, fueled by Dead End Barbecue, top 100 barbecue restaurant in America. 865-255-03 is our telephone number to the Bee Dry Waterproofing Hotline. Thursday is the best day of the week. What a day yesterday. Uh, Tennessee, SEC Media Day, Jeremy Pruitt making his first appearance along with uh, Kyle Phillips. Marquez Callaway and Eli Wolf. Ben McKee, Charlie Burris joins us here on the Swain event. I'm Jason Swain. I really appreciate everyone taking time out this morning to uh, join us. Ben, Charlie, good morning, individuals. Good morning, team. What's up? How goes it? <sighs> Man, I thought that Media Days. Sometimes can be boring. You're talking about something uh, uh, that, 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 that the media uh, has put together, the preseason rankings and, and predictions. Um, and for Tennessee, wasn't much to talk about for first-year coach Jeremy Pruitt coming off a um, – well, Tennessee coming off a 4-8 and eight season, 0-8 oh in the SEC, and Pruitt coming in, first-year head coach, didn't know if there would be much to talk about. Until Ann Murray had some critical comments to say about Jeremy Pruitt, and I did not know. I was not ready. I was not prepared for David Pollock to um, jump on the bandwagon and back up Ann Murray. Now, let me preface my statements by saying this. Ann Murray – was a phenomenal football player at the University of Georgia. David Pollock was a phenomenal football at the University of Georgia. Nah, they were both overrated. Any question about what they did at the the college level is is petty and ridiculous. Overrated. And what Aaron Murray did at the NFL level, 99% of the population can't do. He went, he was drafted, he played quarterback, he made a lot of money, not everyone is successful – uh, so using that to ding him, I think um, is I just think it's pointless. Um, but what they did was take up for a great man for their coach, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them for taking up for for their coach. But they are now in a role uh, of a media member, and their personal feelings, maybe some bias. Came out yesterday, and I, I've been a Pollock fan. Um, I respect how he's been able to, tra- to transition from the football field um, to the to the media chair and do a pretty good job for the most part. So I got a lot of respect for him uh, because I think he calls it pretty pretty straight uh, most of the time. Yesterday, there's a lot of conflicting messages that it, that you thought about over the the months from David Pollock. One that really loved the hire for Tennessee uh, and didn't mention anything about what happened at Georgia until Aaron Murray brought it up. And so we will talk about that. We will discuss it. Um, I got a chance to, to make some phone calls and, 
and kind of get a little bit more um, information on what happened in Georgia, it, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter anything for, for Tennessee uh, except for one little small point that David Pollock made, and I understand why he made it, and I kind of um, agree with him there. But we will get to that. We will first go to the phones. The phone lines are lighting up, and um, I'll let you answer that one first, Ben, and then we'll get to our first phone call. But, yeah, um, not – I was not ready for all the, the, the fireworks yesterday. Then How about Paul Feinbaum <laughs> representing Tennessee? <laughs> He he finally showed you wouldn't know it on a day to day basis, but he finally showed that he's uh, an alumni of the University of Tennessee. Char- Charlie, go go to Google real quick and just search Carney Barker. All righty. Oh, trust me, I was all over Google yesterday trying to figure out what that was when he oh, said I that. I was too, but when you Google it this morning, it's a Barker at a carnival, right? Yes, <laughs> but I did carnival not know what that Barker. Was. But look. But look and at like the top what, four headlines. <laughs> when you Butch look Jones. up Carney Barker, it's Paul Feinbaum calling Butch Jones a Carney Barker. <laughs> From the Atlanta Journal Constitution, the Knox News Sentinel, uh, Rocket Top Insider, all right there at the top. That's funny. I love it. <laughs> Butch Jones is now, I mean, revered as a Carney Barker. I mean, it's true. Let's look at Butch Jones' Wikipedia page. That, I mean, it, that that really is a perfect description of Butch Jones, though. I mean, it, it's, that's it encapsulates. Who he was as Tennessee's coach for the most part, just to, you know, I think we always put it as like a used car salesman or however you want to say that. But Cardi Barker pretty much sums it up. Shout out to Fine Bomb for, <laughs> for that rant. It, it was awesome because not only he backed up Jeremy Pruitt, said Jeremy Pruitt's a real coach. Tennessee finally got a real coach. He also backed up Phil Fulmer, and and said that Phil Fulmer's real AD, and that Tennessee's finally moving in the right direction. Should have hired him the first time. Yeah. Um, Paul's all about it. And and you're not supposed to know where Paul Feinbaum went, went to school. If you watch every single day, you're not supposed to get reminders where a person goes to school. That means they're doing their job correctly. David Pollock, you don't know he went to Georgia if you watch him most of the time. You don't know uh, about you know Greg McElroy if you watch him. Uh, they don't throw it in your face. It's not mentioned. But uh, every once in a while, you get a reminder that yeah, these guys did play in the SEC, and yes, they did play Marcus, you know, Marcus Spears at LSU, Grant McRoy, Alabama, uh, Jordan Rogers at Vanderbilt. Where is my gray poupon and my pinkies up while I take a sip of my coffee this morning? Yeah, I mean, he played it. He played at Vanderbilt. Jordan, so Jordan Rogers, when he talks about Tennessee, you can tell he went to Vanderbilt. But when he talks about everybody else, you really can't. When he talks about Tennessee, it's he's not yeah. he's and not great. But I may be different from everybody, but I love I I love the hate. I enjoy it. I would enjoy it more if we could get a Tennessee guy up there. Yeah, like for basketball, Tennessee's got Dane Bradshaw, who's an analyst on, he, on the SEC but network. But we can't. Dane doesn't even. Yeah, let Dane it is show. very good at staying in the middle. Quite he's, frankly, we need you to get on the SEC network. Yeah, hey man, on. my number's still the same. Fine bomb. Ain't that how they say his name when they call in? Paul. Fire bomb. Hey, Paul. That's my cool. my number's still the same. So, uh, I I enjoy like I enjoy, and I don't. Sorry, I don't think that the guys that are on there, I don't think they are um, consciously hating on other schools every time they open their mouth. That's the narrative that's some of the fans like like to spit out there. I'm sorry, I don't agree. I don't think that every single time Jordan Rogers opens his mouth, he's dissing Tennessee. Does his Tennessee hate maybe shows from time to time? I'm sure it does. David Pollock, I'm sure it does. McElroy, I'm sorry, I, I don't really ever see it. Um, Marcus Spears, I don't ever see it. But I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I actually enjoy it, to be honest, from time to time because those guys keeping it real, man. How do you go four years hating a school and then in the snap of a finger? Oh, you just – man, you love the school and you have no ill will towards that school. Come on, man. I can go pull the Jordan uh, Rogers um, embarrassing YouTube video when he's talking about Tennessee and, and prove my point. But I want to save my eyes and my ears from that video. So I will not do that. And I'm trying to help you all out too. All right, let's get to uh, Andy on the B-Dry Waterproofing Hotline. Andy, good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Andy. What's up, man? What's on your mind this morning? 
Man, I tell you what, I got home last night about twelve thirty, and I was uh, finally catching up on everything of yesterday about the SEC uh, media days with Pruitt, and I was like, I could I couldn't get enough of it. He absolutely, the way I felt about it, he was telling the SEC, y'all better get to work right now. He said, because we're going to give it all in this year, and we're coming for you. He did. I thought it was uh, a solid effort from Pruitt. I think he did well. Another thing, the players talking to Marcus Callaway and Eli Wolf and Kyle Phillips, the things that they have to say about Pruitt just absolutely tells you what kind of a person Pruitt is. And we only hope that it's 100% not being, you know, I don't really think Pruitt is sitting on a, a, a show at all. You know, they said they didn't buy in at first, but now they know that this staff truly cares about them. And I, I just, I can't wait for this season to start. It gets more better every day. I mean, that's just like Drizzy Drake the other day wearing that Tennessee shirt. It, it's just like, it's it's going to be like a party of like 98, I hope, by the end of this season. Ooh, we'll see oh about boy. that. <laughs> Drizzy Drake got you in your feelings, Andy? Juice, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Prove it. Do you love me? Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy. Do you love me? You, you, hey, Andy, you know Drake don't care about Tennessee rights. Yes, he does. Oh, uh, no. Nah. I've heard he's a Kentucky fan. Maybe we can play some cards, though. Yeah, maybe we can flip his commitment. And isn't that right, Andy? That's right. we got to be positive. Y'all work on that. Y'all y'all write up uh, a um, Sabinocchio love letter and send it to Drake I, to see if it works I, out. After I get done recruiting <laughs> Jaden Hill. Well, no, I'll you're banned from talking to Jaden Hill. I, I did see one of the dudes that uh, – at KSR, Kentucky Sports Radio, he wrote about uh, how they're they're done with Drake. This is the last straw. So, we can't take this with Drake anymore. Drake, how he Drake to Kentucky is Kenny Chesney to Tennessee now? Uh, maybe. They should be done with him after he got bodied by Pusha T. But anyway, <laughs> I don't want to start talking about Drake today. 865-255-03, B-Dry Waterproofing Hotline. Uh, we will take our first break of the day, and uh, we'll comb through this David Pollock uh situation yesterday i thought the dialogue was phenomenal the back and forth between pollock um between greg mcelroy and paul fonbaum i thought i mean i thought it was awesome it was a major missed opportunity to me though that they didn't have pollock and pruitt on the same uh same panel at any at any point i think i thought that's not true i thought when i didn't i saw a photo they uh, had pollock who who was answering to a Tennessee fan where he was on the same set is is Jeremy Pruitt later on in the day. I didn't see. I mean, I saw that he did uh, Marcus Spears, Jordan pa- Rogers, and pa- Pollock and and Jeremy Pruitt was on the same set oh, later on in the day. I missed that. Yeah, I have to go back and watch it. I guess I did. I I taped. I had the whole thing on on DVR, uh, but I and I I thought I watched most of it. But anywho, um, well, I I need to see that back and forth to see what happened. Because I I just thought there was always gonna be scared. I mean, there there was just this scared of Pruitt. Or Pruitt no no no. Of him? There I just wanted that that direct line of communication between. Uh, okay yeah yeah yeah. So that was actually on ESPN. That must have yeah. been much later. Yeah. College, okay. So that yeah, was on the SEC now. College football live. That's why I missed it. So, okay. um, because I didn't DVR that. So. I mean I, I mean Boogie McFarland said the things he said about Butch Jones and they was on the same set together. Well I mean what is Butch gonna do? He. He he, they ain't sure ain't gonna intimidate anybody with that eight and a half, you know, shoe he wears. I mean, what he got? I mean, what Pruitt gonna do? Stare at him and he can't think. He ain't gonna no, do anything. No, no, I, I don't want to see fireworks. I just want to see see the direct conversation rather than you know going around through other analysts saying, "Hey, David Pollock, Aaron Murray said this. What do you think about it? How about we let David Pollock say it directly to Jeremy Pro? But apparently, apparently he did. I'll have to go back and look for that. Yeah, I mean, they so, was on the same set together, but yeah. He, the comments about Pruitt at Georgia, it's not the end of the world. But I understand why 
Georgia folks feel a certain type of way about it, but they also need to be thanking Jeremy Pruitt. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. And it does, it does um, apply to Pruitt at Tennessee. It really does. Because Pruitt's personality uh, is exactly what I think Tennessee needs right now. And he made butt heads with folks because of his personality. And I think it's, I think it's actually pretty good. 865-200-5503. Stay with us. Hour one of the Swain event is brought to you by Toyota Knoxville. Stop by Toyota Knoxville to see their great selection of new and pre-owned vehicles. They are located conveniently off the Lover Road exit at 10415 Parkside Drive, right here in Knoxville. When you or a loved one is injured in an accident, there are a lot of questions. There are medical bills, lost work time, damages. What will you do? You'll need someone who will have your back. Call former Marine Marcos Garza, 865-540-8300. The Garza Law Firm will be with you every step of the way. Put this number in your phone right now because you never know when you or a friend will need it. 865-540-8300 and GarzaLaw.com. When I made the move to my own studio, I was worried about this. I was worried about that. I was worried about, hey, did I get this piece of equipment? Did I get that piece of equipment? Does that sound good? Does that not sound good? One thing I didn't have to worry about, that was office furniture. Because office furniture outfitters met my furniture needs. With a 50,000 square foot facility, they have East Tennessee's largest selection and are the best value for new and used office furniture. Located in Knoxville, it's easy to find everything you need for your new space, including desks, file cabinets, chairs, conference tables, and more. Office Furniture Outfitters is turnkey. They came to my place, we mapped everything out that was needed, they delivered, and get this, set everything up. To learn more about what Office Furniture Outfitters can do for you, log on to OFONOX.com. That's OFONOX.com. At some point in your life, you're going to need an attorney. You need a guy like Jerrica Steele with the law firm of Butler, Vines, and Babb. Jerry Castile is East Tennessee born, and he understands what giving his all truly means. To Jared, every case is big, and every client is important. He will aggressively push your case to make sure you are quickly paid every dollar that you deserve. Give Jared Castile a call, 865-244-3933, and talk with him directly. His office is located at 2701 Kingston Pike. So if you've been injured in a car wreck, let Jared Castile and Butler Vines and Babb fight for you. It's Christmas in July at Better Mattress. Better Mattress has teamed up with Home Depot and with select purchases, you can get a free Weber grill or choose a free adjustable base or a free headboard footboard while supplies last. Better Mattress has brands you know like Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, plus the brand I love, the Better Mattress brand, handcrafted in East Tennessee. Go to Better Mattress and get a free adjustable base free headboard footboard or free Weber grill while supplies last. Six area locations, bedrmattress.com. Top 100 Barbecue Restaurant Dead End Barbecue has a new slew of daily specials. Enjoy a different special meal every day, like the Chipotle chicken salad, the chicken tender sandwich, or the kitchen sink burrito filled with brisket, pulled pork, and chicken, not to mention queso, jalapenos, and more. It's called the kitchen sink for a reason. Dead End isn't stopping at your plate, though. Be sure to check out their new summer drink offerings, including the Big Orange Crush, My Clementine, or the Tequila Squirt. There is always something new at Dead End Barbecue. Located off of Sutherland Avenue, Dead End Barbecue. The summer flavor search is over. You're listening to the Swain Event. And you know this, man... Gentlemen, Charlie, Ben McKee, what grade do you give Jeremy Pruitt yesterday? What grade would you give him? I'd give him an A. Yeah, I'd give him an A because he didn't say anything that sparked some controversy. Um, I, I enjoyed his – not necessarily enjoyed. I personally liked it, but as from the outside looking in – 
his response to the criticism from Aaron Murray I thought was perfect. He he didn't – it wasn't necessarily a jab that he threw back at Aaron Murray. It wasn't a jab at all, actually. But he responded the exact way he should have in terms of kind of putting it to bed, I guess you could say. And I thought that was a much more professional way to go about it rather than stooping to Aaron Murray's level and jabbing him back. Um, and then the most important – uh, thing about media days is you don't want to be the guy that everybody is talking about at media days. Just look over at ACC media days where Larry Fedora managed to overtake <laughs> the headlines in the world of college football on the day that Nick Saban was talking at the circus that is SEC media days. And Larry Fedora was able to kind of overtake the headlines and – I was reading an article and kind of what Larry Fedora was talking about. And in the article, I can't remember who wrote it, but the the author of the article said that they talked to an athletic director and a head coach. And they said the primary goal of media days is you don't want to end up who everybody's talking about. So for me, Jeremy Pruitt was able to address the Trey Smith situation. Trey Smith is back. He's able to address J.J. Peterson. Um, didn't give anything away about the quarterbacks. Uh, I thought his comment – about the running back room was good and saying that in this conference you're going to need almost everybody's going to be a running back by committee. Yeah, We're not going to rely six. Yes, and I, I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in terms of all that, kind of dropping some nuggets here and there, his response to Aaron Murray, um, the way he carried himself, it, it didn't necessarily look like he was a first-time head coach at SEC Media Day, so I'd give it an A. I, it, if I'm just talking real, real generally, yeah, it was definitely an A. If I'm being nitpicky, I'd say B plus. He still he needs a little bit of polish still, um, and that's okay. He he, uh, he came off as confident, but he still, in a general sense, looks uncomfortable out there. But I think, as far as the objective of probably what they were looking to get out of SEC Media Days goes, that's an A. He he passed with flying colors because exactly like you're saying, Ben. The only thing that people were talking about with him in any significant way was generated by somebody else. He didn't cause any kind of any gaff, any goof, any nonsense. Uh, he didn't give people a reason to talk. And I think right now for for Tennessee, because of how ridiculous this offseason was and how it, there was just so much bad PR for UT, laying as low under the radar as possible is the best thing you could do. And Jeremy Pruitt did that outside of this, this Aaron Murray stuff. So... I, I thought it was good. I thought every coach did a really good mm -hmm. job, to be to be honest. Um, Pruitt improved greatly from um, other times talking to the media. Uh, you can tell he's, he's practiced. You can tell that the PR team over Tennessee has been working with him. And um, I saw that yesterday. He was asked by Mark um, – Alawan about his comments at the Orange and White game. And Pruitt almost, almost went down the everybody, everybody wants to be the best, so we're trying to be the best at everything. He almost went down explaining it, but chose not to and started to compliment the fans about the passion and um, a really, really smart move there. Um, I would have been fine if he would have explained why he said what he said, but it's just unnecessary uh, in that setting. And so uh, he avoided a potential you know, landmine right there. I thought it was a good question by Mark, though. I thought because, it was a great because question. Because mm -hmm. coming away from spring, that was probably the biggest storyline. Oh, yeah. And it didn't even have to deal with the on-the-field product, and that yeah. was the biggest storyline. So I thought it was a good follow-up by Mark now that it's, what, two and a half, three months away from – those comments. Oh yeah. Let's see how his feelings have changed. Has maybe Tennessee fans, because he went on the big orange caravan, were there enough Tennessee fans that showed up to kind of sway him otherwise uh, on his original thoughts? So, Mr. Pollock, go ahead and knock this out. Um, this is what Pollock said to address Aaron Murray's comment because I think it needs to be addressed a little bit. The stories that I have heard. And some of y'all have heard that come out of Athens. He was referring to uh, Paul Feinbaum and Greg McElroy, and those guys kind of nodded um, 
you know, agreeing with Pollock that they heard some of the same stories um, that are true from coaches that were on staff. Some of the things that Pruitt did to Mark Rick, some of the coaches would tell you are the most disrespectful, most crazy things they've heard uh, Pollock said on the SEC uh, Now show. So I'll be cu- curious to watch Jeremy Pruitt as he evolves with this relationship with Philip Former because Jeremy Pruitt did a good job when he was at, with Nick Saban because he knew where he stood. He did a good job with Jimbo Fisher. They let you know where you stand. The hierarchy was very clear. How does he evolve as a head coach? Key point here is he did a good job with Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher. Well, if he did a good job with champions, that means that culture was a culture that Pruitt is used to. That same culture was in place at Hoover High School for Rush Probst. He worked out well there, championship culture. That culture was at Florida State, Alabama. And so, yeah, he worked well in that culture. He was brought from Florida State to Georgia and paid a whole lot of money because they knew what they were signing up for. They wanted a little sprinkle of the Nick Saban culture in that Georgia football program because that was what they were missing. They had the talent. They had the resources. But they were looking for that little edge. Pruitt was supposed to provide that edge. And when Pruitt went in, Charlie, you said you mentioned this during your you know, on your podcast yesterday. Pruitt was probably more prepared to be a head coach than a lot of guys in that in that room. Not saying Mark Rick, but he was acting like he was a head coach. Yeah, exactly. That's that's how that comes off to me. Instead of Aaron Murray's thought of like, I don't know if this behavior is becoming of a head coach. To me, that comes off as you're trying to push somebody to be better like that. That sounds like a head coach. Well, let me let me ask some context of, of what what I heard. Um, he was not thrilled with some of the things that was being done on the offensive side of the football. Um, he butted head with some offensive assistants, you know, in the complex and outside the complex. Uh, that that happened. But you look at that offense, and that was the first year of Brian Schottenheimer. They had just lost Mike Bobo. Mike Bobo had went to Colorado State. And so I didn't really hear anything going on with Mike Bobo, but you, you heard it with uh, Schottenheimer. And those two guys probably won't be trading Christmas cards anytime soon. But Pruitt's defense improved. From the, the day he got there, their rankings improved. And if you're a defense coordinator – and offensively, you're putting your team in, 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 in compromising positions because you're not moving the football or you're throwing the ball way too much. And it's three and out, and my defense is on the field too much. Of course, I'm going to be upset. I'm going to be bothered uh, because the offense helps the defense and defense helps the offense, vice versa. So Pruitt is not one that's going to just not say anything if something needs to be said. That's acting more like a head coach yeah. in, the, in those – in team settings, in those – I'm sorry, in those coaching um, meeting settings. And so what Pruitt is being accused of is he would he would show up, Mark Rick, in front of everybody else and say, hey, man, you need to fix this or you need to do this. Well, Jordan Pruitt was really ready to be a head coach then, and he waited. He waited for this opportunity here at Tennessee um, – Ben, what do you what do you have to add there? I agree with one hundred percent with what both of y'all are saying. But isn't there a way to go about doing that without being disrespectful? Yes, because sure. that's the problem that I have with it. Um, and I mean, you heard it from David Pollock, you heard it from Aaron Murray, and if you also go on the Athletic, Seth Emerson wrote a very nice article on kind of what he had heard during the time, and, and he Seth laid knows. out. And <laughs> Seth knows everything about Georgia, mm-hmm. and he laid out the exact same things that. Aaron Murray and David Pollock were saying. So while I agree that I think it's awesome that Jeremy Pruitt was in Athens kind of pushing Mark Rick to be better than what he was doing, there's also ways that you can go about doing it without being disrespectful. That's like if I think you're doing something that I think you could do better, I'm not going to come here and be in here and be disrespectful to you about it. I'm not going to degrade you in front of other people while I'm expressing my opinion. If I brought you in knowing that that's who you are, then I have to be prepared for moments like moments to occur like yeah, that. Yeah, and I get and, it, but and, that doesn't make it okay, in my opinion. Yeah, that's fine. But 
Georgia, what have y'all done since 1980? You brought Jeremy Pruitt in to win a championship. You brought him in to win a championship. What you have been doing has not been good enough. It was not good enough. So you brought him in. You did your due diligence to bring Jeremy Pruitt in. You knew what you were signing up for. You probably called Nick Saban. You probably made some phone calls about Jeremy Pruitt. You knew what you were signing up for. And if you want to win a championship, that's that's what happens. Coaches get into it. I've heard so many stories about coaches at Alabama and how they – how they butt heads. I've heard stories about Kevin Steele and, and Kirby Smart. When Kirby when uh, Kirby Smart was the defense coordinator and Kevin Steele was just an analyst. I heard stories about how they almost start to throw hands. That's that's what happens. This ain't this ain't pottery class. Coach I mean coaches don't have to get along for a team to be good. That's not because at the end of the day, I mean, each of these coaches are kind of their own their own man. Almost they're almost each a, a, a small business of sorts. You know, they they run what they run, and that's what they need to concentrate on. When you're a when you're a, a you know a position coach or DC, you handle what you handle, and it doesn't really matter uh, what these other dudes dudes do as long as those other dudes are doing their job. Uh, and so if you know if there's a guy on the staff that you don't get along with, that shouldn't affect the product on the field. Ultimately, should shouldn't yeah. is the main word there, but and sometimes it does. Uh, be, but but you can you can have a staff that doesn't always get along that's still extremely successful. Case in point being Alabama. It, it would be one thing if Georgia, you know, had had gotten over the hump. You know, a lot of guys that were coaching on that staff, you know, they had some success winning nine games, winning when did the tenth game in the bowl game. But that's that was not good enough. That's not what Prue was used to, and so. He's not a guy that's going to go behind the back of another player, another coach, and go, "Hey, hey, Mark Rick, you know, you need, to, we need to do something about 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 Brian Schottenheimer's offense." Hey, now, no, man, I'm gonna say it right here in front of everybody, so you know where I stand. That's Ben Pruitt. That's the most consistent thing that I've heard about Pruitt. He's going to tell you what he thinks. What coach have we heard tell recruits on their unofficial visit? What they need to work on if they wanted to offer. You gotta get it better. Like, I, I've, I've, I haven't heard of. I haven't heard of that before. Usually, you have coaches sucking up the recruits and telling them how great they are, even if they really don't think they're that great. Proves like, man, you gotta get faster. You gotta get tougher. You gotta become more coachable. You are a diva. You are a prima donna. These are things that I know have been said. Yep. And that's him. That you. There's there's no Pruitt, you know. On Monday and Pruitt on a Tuesday, it's been the same dude from everything that I've heard. I've talked to a lot of people since he's been hired. That's him. You you had to have known that's what you were signing up for. You really you really did. But I I understand Aaron Murray defending his coach. But what Aaron Murray does not understand is, bro, your coach is really good, but he's not championship yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't great, and Pruitt was brought in to – Push that program over the top, and you know what, Georgia fans? While you it, it did it. while you over here huffing and puffing, and it trying worked. to get and, and trying to get mad, you better be thanking Pruitt because y'all fired Mark Rick, mm-hmm. y'all fired Mark Rick, and then y'all brought in someone from the Saban tree that operates very similar to Jeremy Pruitt. And guess what you did? Y'all must beat Alabama. Look where you are right now. You're 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 operating on all cylinders, like you should be doing, like you should have been doing for the last 10 years because you have all the talent and all the resources. So while you're over here huffing and puffing, getting in your feelings, you need to be thanking Jeremy Pruitt because he woke people up around there. You might have hurt some feelings and you might have gotten to it, but he was he was absolutely right. And that's what Polly is concerned about what he's going to do here, and that is fair, but he's the head coach. He's the head coach. He's already doing it. That medical staff shakeup, whoo, that turned some heads. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, everybody's not happy about that, but that needed to happen. I'm telling you, I'm not going to throw people under the bus. That needed to be that needed to happen. There needed to be a shakeup with the medical staff. It is known in the SEC that Tennessee has had problems in that area. It's known. That needed to happen. So he shook that up. 
anyone associated with Butch Jones, anybody associated with the losing that has been going on the last couple of years, Pruitt has looked hard at. He has evaluated and see, okay, if I'm going, if I, am I going to keep you, or I'm going to let you go? Thornton Center, Doctor, you know Scroggins, they've done a great job. Why change that? But everybody else who have been a who's been a part of the problem, you're going to be let go. That's what Tennessee needs because the problem of how we got into this mess. The reason why we got into this mess is a whole bunch of people, when the cracks were showing, we put makeup on it. Ah, it's okay. Ah, no, it's okay. No, man, we, you know, we won in 98. It's all right. No, we, I mean, we win in eight games. It's okay. No, we win nine games. Ah, it's okay. When, you, when you're seeing apparent problems in your face, a bunch of people around here that's been here a long time ignored signs until it was too late. And now Pruitt's come in with a fresh set of eyes going, oh, no, Mm-mm. we can do this at Florida State. We didn't do this at Alabama. Hell, we didn't even do this at Hoover. This is this is not championship. This is not championship culture. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Y'all riding too much on 98. Let's, let's change things up. And that's what's going on. Let's get to the phones. The phone lines are um, going crazy. We've got T.C. in Athens. T.C. in Athens, my man. Glad to talk to you. Good morning. What's up, Swaino? What's up? Man, just uh... – you're nailing it, man. You're absolutely nailing it about Jeremy Pruitt. You know, uh, I have a family member that worked in the uh, athletic department in Georgia under uh, uh, Mark Rick's uh, regime. Uh, I know boosters. Uh, I'm talking top boosters, guys. Mm-hmm. You know, play golf with and stuff. Mm-hmm. Everything you said this morning is absolutely spot on. Thank you, sir. Uh, he came in. And uh, basically shook it up, told Rick, told all those guys, this is not a championship-level program. Uh, We're at a disadvantage without the indoor facility. UGA would not have that indoor facility without Jeremy Pruitt coming in there and shaking it up. It'd be status quo, same-o, same-o right now. Um, He came in, and, and yeah, they didn't like what he had to say. And Schottenheimer definitely didn't like what he had to say. One of the top boosters over at UGA, I was talking to him about it one day, and he said, bottom line is, on uh, when they would uh, practice and that kind of thing, you know, Schottenheimer wanted him to call the dogs off, not disguise things, not basically not run defense. Wanted him, you know, to lay back and all that. And Pruitt said, heck no, we're, we're coming after you. This is what you're going to see every week. So stop us. And he and Schottenheimer went at it. Oh, yeah. No, they, he, because because Schottenheimer was soft. He was. Yep. You know, I, oh, I've heard the stories. They almost threw some hands now. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, now I, one of the, uh, you know, there's been other people out there said that he and, and Rick got into a physical altercation and all that. I've talked to several people about this. I didn't not hear that. a single one. Well, that's there's been rumors of that. I've heard it many times. Not a single person has confirmed to me that that happened. Uh, it was, you know, confirmed he did show up at Rick's house after the Alabama game and had words and all that. But <laughs> one of the that. top boosters said to me uh, that uh, that it was vastly over, uh, just or greatly, I should say, greatly over exaggerated as to what became of that. As far as that altercation, yeah, that's that's why I said they got into it in the complex and out of the complex without 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 being too specific there. Yes, that 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 is what I also heard that that um you know there were some words exchanged uh, at, at a residence. Yes. Yep, absolutely. And, TC. The bottom line is this guy wants to win. He hates losing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God we finally got a coach that hates to lose. Yes, yes. That I mean, I mean, I'm sick of champion of life crap. I'm ready to be an actual champion, where you put an actual trophy in the trophy case. Yes, I'm and with that's you. That's what this guy wants to do. I'm with so. you, TC. I I appreciate the phone call, and and TC is as plugged in as any any Tennessee fan 
uh, about what's going on in Georgia as, as anyone. He uh, lives in Athens. Uh, you know, pray for him, but he lives in Athens, and he knows. He knows what's going on down there. Uh, let's keep it moving. We've got Spencer from Memphis and then Charles. Spencer, good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Man, I, I'll tell you what. I felt so good after media days yesterday, and I, I, I tell myself that every four years when we get a new coach, I'm not going to get suckered into a press conference. You know, <laughs> you know I'm not going to be impressed. But every time, like, you know what? Thank God it finally sounds like we have, like, a legitimate, real coach. With an edge, you know, because uh, and that's the other thing too is, yeah, you know, I, you know, I was, uh, I, I was amazed that he was able to. It seemed like he won first round and then they called on mommy UT fan again. I don't know. I mean, maybe <laughs> we'll see how that turns out. Uh, you know, but he, Ryan McGee, who never really comments too much on Tennessee athletics, uh, he said, "No, you guys got to coach this all in." You know, he's a both coach, and I, and I realize that people, yeah, they say stuff like that because they're kind of put up to it. And you know, what else are you gonna say? Uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm all about this winning championship mentality. And the fact of the matter is, David Pollock can cry with his girlfriend, Aaron Murray, and everybody else, and all the other leaders as much as they want to. But the fact of the matter is, if he was just that bad of a person, why did Kevin Shearer and Tracy Rocker come to Tennessee? Mm. If, he's just, if he's just that bad of a person, why does Will Friend, who I know he, he, he's his best friend and Will Friend, why does he go, leave Mike Bobo as offensive coordinator to be an offensive line coach? Mm-hmm. Why yeah. does Chris Winkie leave Alabama when he probably stood a good chance to get some sort of uh, on the field coaching responsibility there? This mm. year? Uh, you know, I, I, all that you say, you know, I don't care what David Pollock thinks. I don't care what the crybabies think. This is Tennessee. And just because they couldn't handle an edge because it upset Mark Rick, guess what? Mark went, went down to Miami, and you know what? He's got an edge now, and he started winning. Sure uh, you know, and, and, and so, you know, the fact that matters Tennesseans and, and the Tennessee fan base has an edge. Jeremy Pruitt kind of matches that. He's a, he's, you know, seems like a nice enough guy, a hard working guy, but he's got an edge to him. And that says, that speaks volumes because it kind of lines up with the Tennessee fan base. You know, Philip Fulmer was, it, it was far more polished than Jeremy Pruitt, but Phil had a little bit of an edge to him too, if he, if he needed to. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking this is just great. I, I'm, I'm telling you, my confidence level for this year, I, I don't know if it will translate the win, but I just know that when we hit somebody, we're going to hit them. And we're going to at least try. And if not, they're going to pay for it. You know, I mean, I, that's, I'm at least looking forward to that this year. Great great phone call. I agree with you there, Spencer. Thank you for, for that. You know, the, the coaches that really stand out of, hey, man, why, why, did, why are you following Pruitt to Tennessee? You're in a really good spot. Chris Rump. Didn't have to follow. He could have been paid in the shade at any school in the SEC. Um, Tracy Rocker, same. You look at Tyson Helton, who was coaching with his brother at USC, who knows that it's either make or break. You're either going to be blamed for everything that goes wrong, being an offense coordinator for a defensive head coach, or you have a chance to propel yourself into the next phase of your career. Tyson Helton, not a lot of ties in the SEC, said, yeah, come on, let's, let's do it. It's not like he stepped into a situation where he has Jake Fromm as a quarterback. There's a lot of question marks about the quarterback. So these guys that have joined Jeremy Pruitt, because Chris Winkie, I'm pretty sure, if he wanted to, could be a Florida State. He's attracted some really dang good coaches and some really, really dang good people. So – Hard to be a bad dude if you're doing that. They probably have a bad moment, sure, but we all have bad moments. And again, he was just trying to, um, <laughs> you know, fix that that l- complacent culture in Athens, Georgia. Let's get to Charles. Charles, good morning. Good morning, man. Charles, good morning, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, Swain. Good. Well, the the previous two callers kind of stole my thunder, man. So I don't really have anything to say now. But Swain, you remember? <clears throat> during spring practice, the pressures that he would have after spring practice and just the disgust on his face after yes. what he had seen during the practices. Yes. And how I used to call – how I, I would call in and laugh with you on the phone. Absolutely. About just the disgust that he had and what he saw, what he couldn't believe he was seeing. Yep. So that's what we're dealing with. And that's good. That's the kind of coach that Tennessee has now. And so, 
for the things that you have heard that went on at Georgia, I mean, are you surprised? No. He was probably just disgusted at, at the way those guys were calling those five-star recruits as he was during the spring practice here a few months ago. So, yeah. anyway, guys, you have a great show, and uh, I'm going to hang up and listen. L- let me tell you this. He's already rubbed people wrong here, and it's great. He needs to. We went 0-8 in the SEC last year. 4-8. and We've been in an embarrassment. We're not relevant. Our fans are holding on because we're prideful. Because we don't want to admit that we're not the same school as we were 10 years ago. Our fans, help our fans out here. We're losing battles with other fan bases arguing. Our fans are holding on. But the truth is, is we're not relevant right now. But we think we think we are. We think everything is okay. Every oh, it's okay to be. We just you know we just need a little small little tweak. No, need more than that. I'm I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So you don't have to say, well, so you swine is biased. No, I played here. I love this university. But I see everything. I've seen everything for the last 10 or 15 years take place. I know things inside and out that I'm not going to share on the radio, but I'm letting you know that Pruitt has ruffled feathers in a good way. In a good way. It's things that need to be done. There are things that when Dave Hart was hired as AD, that I sent the message through someone else to, to someone else to Dave Hart to get to him to let him know this is the area you need to look at. Nothing ever happened. Pruitt comes in, boom, things are happening. A65. 255.03. We have Attaboy coming up next. Stay with us. Hour one of the Swain event is brought to you by Toyota Knoxville. Stop by Toyota Knoxville to see their great selection of new and pre owned vehicles. They are located conveniently off the Lover Road exit at 10415 Parkside Drive right here in Knoxville. There is a 30% chance of rain today, partly sunny with a high of 89 and a low around 69. Georgia sucks. Tomorrow, there is a 40% chance of showers, partly sunny with a high around 89 and a low near 70. Pollock's a whiny girl. Saturday, showers and thunderstorms likely, mostly cloudy with a high in the mid 80s. Aaron Murray's clueless. Weather on the Swain event is brought to you by Be Dry. If your basement is wet or cracked, Be Dry can help. BeDry.com. Do you have cracks in your foundation? a wet basement, or a nasty, leaky crawl space? Our listeners have heard about them on the Swain event for over a year, and now it's time to make the call. Give B-Dry Waterproofing and Foundation Repair the opportunity to fix your home's problem. Since 1958, that's right, nearly 60 years, B-Dry has been solving basement, crawl space, and foundation problems throughout the country. B-Dry only uses high-quality materials from reputable manufacturers. They back their installations with some of the best warranties in the industry to provide homeowners with added peace of mind. They are truly an A-plus company. Whenever you start experiencing a wet basement, leaky crawl space, or a cracked foundation, remember these three words. Better call B-Dry. Reach out to B-Dry today at 865-662-5238 to schedule your free appointment. That's 865-662-5238. Remember, better call Be dry With the hot weather and humidity comes mosquitoes and other pests. Let Southeast Termite and Pest Control take care of that problem for you. They offer one-time or package treatments that control biting adults as well as larvae. Southeast Termite and Pest Control has been in business since 1971 and is local and family-owned. They offer free estimates and quotes with no obligations. So don't get bit anymore. Go with the pest control company you can trust. Call Southeast Termite and Pest Control at 865-925-3700 or find them online at southeasttermite.com. Hey Annie, you're the spokesperson for Toyota Knoxville, right? That's right. Why should I buy from Toyota Knoxville? Are you looking for new or used vehicles? Does it matter? No, because Toyota Knoxville has over 390 new Toyotas on the ground and over 350 pre-owned vehicles available to choose from. Okay, so big selection. 
and a lifetime warranty at no charge on all new and select pre-owned vehicles. A lifetime warranty. A non-factory limited lifetime powertrain warranty with unlimited miles. Plus 30 years of experience in Knoxville, not just serving our customers, serving our community. And the buying experience? Hello, it's Toyota Knoxville. Read the reviews. Talk to anybody that's been there. Okay, okay. Where am I going? Toyota Knoxville is at I-40 and the Lover Road exit. Go to Parkside Drive. You can't miss it. Can I tell them Annie sent me? I wish you would. If you're passionate about the car you drive, come meet the people that are passionate about the way they sell at Toyota Knoxville. ToyotaKnoxville.com. Warranty good at participating dealers. I just wanted to come by and congratulate you on the great work you've been doing. Uh, you the hell we got, man. Now that's how you're supposed to drive. From that one, that's how you drive. This kid can draw circles. Don't remind yourself. Nobody built like you. You design yourself. Bam. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. Attaboy. I got three attaboys today. My my first attaboy goes to Paul Feinbaum for representing, representing yesterday, being a Tennessee alum and representing, standing up for Tennessee. You know, I have this VFL car. It's probably the only thing Bush Jones did good here in Tennessee was get these things made for the VFLs. Um, They're pretty cool. I want to give this to Paul Feinbaum. Let him wear this on the Paul Feinbaum show because he showed out yesterday putting on for Tennessee. So my first attaboy goes to Paul Feinbaum. Um, my second attaboy goes to Jim Kelly. He continues to fight. He continues to be um, – of an example of what strength, courage, faith stands for. He's fighting for his life each and every day. Uh, he beat cancer twice, and he, yesterday he was recognized uh, at the ESPYs, the Arthur Ash, uh, uh, yeah, Arthur Ash uh, yeah, Courage Ash Award, Courage Award, yeah. um, Courage Award, and spoke about not giving up. About having having tough days. Um, family man, winner on the football field, and um, he's winning your life right now because he's being an example to others to, to not give up. And you, know, you can think your situation is tough. You can think your situation is hard. You can woe is me and my God, my life and this and that. But imagine being Jim Kelly, being. Um, the, the leader, the, the example of strength for so long, and you are now in this vulnerable position, and your 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 wife and your kids seeing you in this in this position, and you're still trying to show strength, and you're still trying to smile, and because uh, you don't want to scare them, you don't want to freak them out, and so uh, Jim Kelly just continue to be you, be great, uh, be an example for all all of us to never ever ever give up, no matter what life. Uh, gives us just keep fighting each and every day um and then my last attaboy is actually an atta girl and today is my wife's birthday july 19th and so happy birthday okay baby you right <laughs> even on your birthday so happy birthday to my wife uh july 19th is her birthday um, she's a big fan of Tex-Mex, so, you know, if y'all got some suggestions on some, some awesome margarita recipes or something like that, let her brother know, um, before I go to Pinterest. <laughs> so, but I'm giving my atta, my atta girl to my wife. Uh, today is her birthday. And, uh, I'm not going to reveal her age, but just know that she's older than me. She's about to come storming and, through this door if you don't watch it. <laughs> and that just lets you know that your boy got game because, you know. I, I, Isn't she barely older than you, though? Two years, two years older, two two, old, two years old. She could just ride I'm, in the cradle. I'm three months, exactly three months older than my fiance. Does that mean I don't have game? That exactly is what it means. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You don't have game. So, Charlie, Which, where do you stand? I am a year and a month older than my wife. 
You definitely don't have game. No. Yep, I got nothing. I had well, I don't know. I'm not gonna get. I've ba- I've dated older women in the past, but anyway, before before that's, my wife came along. That's not that's not a good idea, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> what what do y'all have for Adam? Adam 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 boy? Let's, yeah, let's not do that. I just I I had a. Attaboy, it's what we've already been talking about, but specifically, Jeremy Pruitt's response to the whole Aaron Murray thing, I, I thought was just good. It, whether it was, and I would almost guarantee that it was pre-planned, but even if it was pre-planned, um, I just thought that it was it was smart, it was concise, it was to the point, it got the point across that he needed to get across without being, without creating any kind of extra drama. I thought it was good. And just his, his performance in general, like, with... With something that he's so clearly uncomfortable doing, <laughs> I I thought that he he really handled uh, yesterday well. So I got to give give credit where it's due to Pruitt and also just to just to the players. I thought they were really really great too in all the interviews that I've seen. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go this uh, this year as I have in you know the last few years. But um, everything that I've seen from them, they were great. It's an honor to be able to do that, um, and I think they handled themselves really well. It was good stuff from. Everyone involved with Tennessee at Media Days yesterday. Benjamin? Got to give Madden an attaboy because they picked <laughs> the best possible player to be on the cover of Madden this year. That being the best wide receiver in all of all college football. That That's not factual at all considering he doesn't play college football. The best wide receiver in all of football, period, Antonio Brown. So attaboy to Madden and attaboy to A.B. So it's nice to see a Steeler on the cover. I've I've had a good run lately of cover athletes because on I know you don't care about this, but MLB the show Aaron Judge was on it this past year, so I get Aaron Judge on the last copy of MLB the show, and then I get Antonio Brown on Madden. You, you sure you're happy about AB being on the Madden cover? Yeah, as he said yesterday about the Madden curse, he doesn't care about it. He's still gonna go out and ball. Okay. All right, man. You make a bet. I bet you. A, I don't want to bet on on, on, a, on a man failing. I don't. You know, that's not. That's not. That's not my style, man. Well, we, like we would be. We not yeah. betting on him failing. Betting on whether the Madden curse works or not. Yeah, that's kind of the same thing. It's just the way you got to think about. No, it. No, I I can't do that, man. I ain't wired that way, man. I'm gonna be rooting for him to be successful. Uh, no, I can't do that, man. I can't bet. I can't bet on a guy. Um, well, see, you, know, you have a real, you have a real dilemma because I root for Antonio Brown. Seth roots for Julio Jones. And you, you antagonize both of us. Yeah, because I'm y'all's friend, I, I like making fun of y'all. But um, you know, we don't, we don't really have a lot with the wide receivers. We got a little bit better though. We got a uh, old boy from, from from Jacksonville, Allen Robinson. But we, we're better. Swain event. Uh, we'll go to the phones right after the break. Paul didn't want to leave you, leave you hanging there. So uh, we'll come to you right after the break. Swain event. Be right back. Hour one of the Swain event is brought to you by Toyota Knoxville. Stop by Toyota Knoxville to see their great selection of new and pre-owned vehicles. They are located conveniently off the Lover Road exit at 10415 Parkside Drive right here in Knoxville. Craving homemade flavors that don't take hours in the kitchen? Mrs. Grissom's cheese spreads and chicken salads are the perfect go-to. Ready-to-eat meals and snacks found in the meat or dairy section at the grocery store with flavors of home in every bite. Whether you crave the classic Mrs. Grissom's pimento cheese or the gold gluten-free select cranberry pecan chicken salad, enjoy the sweet taste of a home-cooked meal in every container. Select the best. Select Mrs. Grissom's. Hey, it's Jason Swain. There's a lot of people talking about testosterone, but do your homework and go to a medical provider that you trust and that specializes in testosterone. I got my levels tested at the Low T Center. Their physicians exclusively diagnose and treat men with Low T. At the Low T Center, it's quick and easy. Treatment is even covered by most health insurance. Call 865-392-1388 or go to LowTCenter.com. JC's Tree and Landscaping Service specializes in quality tree work done at an affordable price. Trimming and removing trees are their specialty. They also offer other services like land clearing, stump grinding, crane services, and all of your basic landscaping needs for both commercial and residential. 
JCs will give you a free estimate and beat any written quote by a competitor to guarantee that you get the lowest price around. Don't risk your land with a fly-by-night service. JC's Tree and Landscaping is licensed and insured. Give them a call at 865-599-3799. Up goes your car insurance. Nobody likes surprises, so switch to Erie Rate Lock. Get a great rate that stays that way even after an accident, ticket, or inflation. In fact, it's locked until you change a car, driver, or your address. Your Erie agent in Knoxville is in SureFit RM. Get a quote at 865-684-4900. That's 865-684-4900. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. We have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones. See? But did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost that it takes to replace it? Well, you can because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, and Sipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike between Office Depot and Hardy's or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technician to see how we can get your phone working today. Looking for a different way to enjoy the Swain event? Then check out Swain Event TV, driven by Toyota Knoxville and toyotaknoxville.com. Follow the show on Periscope and Facebook Live. Don't just hear the show, see the show. That's Swain Event TV. Let's get to Paul on the B Dry Waterproofing Hotline, BDry.com. Paul. Oh, Paul, God. good morning. Great, great, greatest name in SEC country today. Paul. Paul. <laughs> hey, uh, first time caller on this new show and uh, really enjoy the uh, Swain event plus. Thank you, sir. Um, but uh, I just want to say real quick that last weather was probably the best thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Uh, we need more of that. Yes. <laughs> Seth, Seth Stokes does the uh, weather report, and I'll be honest, I mean, he, he does them. Um, I mean, he, we've been working together so long and know each other so well. He does them, and I don't even, you know, I don't even, he puts them in the system. I don't even know. Um, you know, he didn't even tell me that he dropped some Georgia hate in um, <laughs> yesterday. I did see him going into the system yesterday and, and, and doing some things uh, with our with our – uh, automation program, but I had to ask him during the break to send me the weather report so I could listen to it, listen to it on my phone. So he sent it to me, and it was great. As always, Stokes does a great job. Uh, Aaron, Mur Aaron Murray is whiny. Uh, no, he said Murley. What well, he say? Murray is clueless, and then David Pollock was whiny, and Georgia sucks. Yeah. Uh, it was it was great, man. Really funny. But uh, so about the uh, Pruitt at Georgia. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first thing that. Uh, Pruitt said to what Joshua Warren from uh, Farragut uh, when he met him. Yep. Uh, he said, "Look, there's no way you can play for me or play for the SEC. You're too small. You're not big enough. There's no way you're going to play." I mean, he's just an, he's the he's your buddy that tells you, "Paul, oh, you gain too much weight. Your head's too big." Uh, you know, he he tells you like what you need to hear. And uh, so anybody that says that they don't want that around here, they're crazy because we need something like that. Now, Pruitt is exactly what we need. Um, I met Pruitt for 20 seconds in person, and it was Orange and White weekend. It was that Friday at the VFL function, and I went upstairs um, to, to meet some of the coaches, and they changed the rule where recruits can be around alumni. So I was up there, and um, Pruitt, Pruitt walked up, and I introduced myself, and you know what he said? Yeah, I know who you are, and that was it. And I was like, uh, uh, okay, cool, man. All right, man. Hey, cool. I mean, I, I, I like that. I mean, I, like, I like it, man. It doesn't, doesn't bother me. I didn't want him to be go, hey, man, it's Jason Swain. What's going on, man? You know, spend 20 minutes talking with me. No, man, go recruit. Go recruit. And um, he's what Tennessee needs. I'm telling you, he is exactly what Tennessee needs. 
and there's not a lot. There's not a lot of cases and scenarios that if he just coaches football, does the things that I know he's great at, which is recruiting, and he hires good people around him, and he has good support from the top. If he's not successful, it would be it would be very disappointing, and I would not totally blame it on him. Um, in most circumstances, now if he does something stupid, you know, you know, getting in trouble or something like that, you know, like Hugh Freeze, and that's another thing. But he is really uh, set up to be successful here. Um, it's not going to be an overnight process. I can tell you that right now. Uh, he is not blessed with the roster that Curry Smart and, and Dan Mullen was blessed with when they took over. But I think he has the edge over Dan Mullen and Curry Smart in being able to recruit better than them. Uh, because of his connections in high school and because his approach and his style. Um, now, Georgia's resources, they have, they, have, they have shown us that they are serious about winning, and they seem to be unified at the top. That's the difference. Can you be unified at the top? That's something that Tennessee needs to work on too. But um, we got ourselves, um, I think, the right coach at the right time. Now everybody else has to, to fall in place. Oh, yeah. I'm um- – I'm real good buddies with, and I'm sure you know, Link Hudson at BFL Films. Okay, and, yeah. Uh, and for somebody like him to tell me that, man, we've got the right guy in there. And, uh, I mean, he sees it way better than what I do. I mean, he's been there every day. So uh, He's been there a long time, hasn't he? <laughs> he's seen oh, a lot. Yep. So, if he if he puts his stamp on him, he says, nobody's going to outwork these guys. I'll promise you that. And uh, that's good to hear. Absolutely. So, hey, Glad you guys took my call, and hope you all have a good day. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for holding. Really appreciate that. Paul! Great phone call. 865-255-03. Uh, a lot of people on the text box on Twitter love the Seth Stokes weather report. I I guess we just, since we we don't listen to it, I just assume that not, you know, the weather report. I, I guess when I listen to the radio, I, I just kind of tune that stuff out or like, We'll we, I mean, we don't else, listen to it every single day. Yeah. During, during the break time, you know, you're, but, you're putting together things that you're going to leave with the next segment. You may take a bathroom break. Yeah. You know, we may be discussing, <laughs> you know, kind of what happened. We literally um, had like 15 yeah. people mention it. So, like, that, that's very that's very encouraging. Yeah, sometimes that, sometimes we we'll hear it. Some, but yeah. today we we didn't hear it. Uh, but, you know, Stokes being being Stokes, man. Which, which I love is, it. Which is, I love which is, it. Which is awesome. So, I wish Stokes was at ACC Media Days asking questions because – um, I'm disappointed that that Nick Saban was not asked about being prank called. Why was Nick Saban not asked about that? Did we confirm that that was real, dude? It sounded, I listened to it, it, it and it, it sounded a lot. I mean, it seemed real, dude. It sounded just like Nick Saban. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Jim McElwain had to address the shark pitchers. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good point. Jim McElwain addressed the shark pick- pitchers. I mean, I a think, Photoshop of him naked laying on top of a shark. I, I think guys are scared. They are scared. They're scared of Nick Saban. They're scared that he they're going to ask that question like, hey, there was this video of you getting prank called. What, you know, do you do you recall that? And, I mean, he <laughs> would absolutely tear that guy apart, and you would have to accept that if you were going to ask that question. You, you have to. I don't, th- pa- I don't think he would. Right. I don't think he would tear the whoever asked the part. You have to package it right. You do. I think, and would, I'm also not. Gonna I think s- he would go down the road of like, why is this appropriate to ask right now? And I'm not going to answer that question. Yeah, and- I don't think he'd be a butthole about it though. Oh, but he's Nick Saban though. About football things. Normally, when you ask him about things that aren't related to football, he's more than happy to answer those questions. Maybe, maybe, but uh, he he annoyed me yesterday for sure because he essentially. Blamed. He came out and immediately in his opening statement blamed the media for drumming up the drama about the quarterback battle when ultimately, I mean, you played both quarterbacks in the national championship game on the biggest stage in college football. This is your own fault. <laughs> and it's he, he treats it like it's such a bad thing that he has two great quarterbacks. Uh, you know, and, and he, he puts on this show of, like, you better not ask me any questions about it or else I'm going to, uh, you know. Well, and it ah, that whole grandstanding just, ugh, you stop. Got, you, got, you got to look at it from Nick Saban's point of view. If you were him, you would not want any questions about the quarterback stuff. You don't want um, any more attention paid to the quarterbacks because you want to – 
you want to have both guys on the roster as long as you can. But I don't think it's going to happen. And the more the media talks about it, the more it makes it hard for you. So I, I get why Nick Saban is not a big fan of talking about the quarterback battle. He understands that's part of it. But he, like Pruitt showed yesterday, Nick Saban is becoming like the master of using the media to, to push his narrative. Jeremy Pruitt, I don't know if you noticed this, but he dropped some, 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 some nuggets there, some messages to some recruits when he mentioned Charlotte being important in recruiting. And he mentioned uh, Grayson High School. There's ballers there at Grayson High School, okay? When he mentioned uh, other places. Huntington, West Virginia, Charlotte, North Carolina, he was Fort being, Lauderdale. He was being very strategic, very smart. All of Tennessee's top targets right now yes. are from those cities. Yes, so mm-hmm. you got to use the media. That's what the media is for. You can't let the media use you. You have to use the media. And what's sad is our previous coach didn't understand how to use the media. All he did was just blame the media. Blame, 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 blame. Use them. Use the media to push your narrative. Use them. And that's why I love that that, that our players have a chance to talk to the media as much as possible because they can use the media to um, – make the next step in their lives. I mean, look at Damon Harris yesterday for Alabama. I mean, he was he was great. He was excellent, yeah. He was great. Well, I mean, what a great job Damon Harris did running back for Alabama. I can see him one day, you know, being a David Pollard. Hopefully he takes his position. The funniest quote from Damian Harris yesterday and the reason why I, I truly give him that, that great designation, he said this was uh, the quote, Alabama tailback Damian Harris on new team analyst Butch Jones, quote, I don't even know what an analyst does, but I'm sure he will do it at the highest possible level. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ah, great stuff. Oh, it's trash day in my house, so I do need I – need, I need a good analyst over here to take out my <laughs> trash. All right, 865-255-03. Let's get to the phones. We've got Nathan, then we've got Steven Georgia, then we've got Turkey Man. All right, Nathan. Good morning. What's up? What's up, fellas? What's up? All right, man. Hey, just a little to unpack yesterday from the SEC Media Days, uh, Sam Pruitt speak. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I ran into a guy uh, here locally in Chattanooga who goes to the gym, same gym I do, and he's kind of a sports guy around here. And he uh, was at a local high school baseball game in the spring last year, and uh, Coach Rocker's kid was pitching against a kid down here. They both were potentially – selected to go first round didn't happen but anyways he got to kind of sit down with him and you know was in the stands talk to him picking his brain a little bit and basically the two things that came out of the conversation was one they didn't have any players they didn't have the, the, the Ross they didn't have their guys and number two there was no fight in this team you know but I, I was just a little bit interesting to come for me because I don't get to talk to people that are really I mean, and, and I believe this guy. I mean, I've, I've known him for years. I don't think he has any reason to be dishonest with me. So I guess those are two things that two things that were known, but to hear it come directly from somebody that's on that staff, you know, that they recognize that, I think it's a pretty sad state. Um, hopefully we can get that turned around. Uh, number two, you know, um, yesterday uh, when Coach Pruitt was speaking, you know, um, and, and really after he was done speaking, there was a little bit of debate between the guys up there, Pollock and uh, McElwain, about, you know, how long he, you know, you have in this day and era to start trending up. And it was kind of, uh, you know, between a two, year, year two and year three. Mm-hmm. I heard that conversation. You know, yep. you know, so what do you guys think? I mean, you know, by year two, I mean, we we should definitely start seeing his stamp on this program and what uh, and what he's about. I, I, we just have not had a coach since Coach Fulmer with all of these guys here. Outside of keeping that first year was pretty exciting. I think he put his stamp on it pretty quickly, and you saw some physicality. But we have not seen guys develop from year one to year two a real jump to say whoa. They are developing these guys. The quarterbacks look better. The, the overall physicality of the team. They look excited. You know, they look like they know what they're doing. We just haven't seen that. So, you know, cause should we expect that in year two? And, you know, lastly, I know I've, I've said a lot, but 
you know, the, the thought that we can't come up here, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of people aren't giving us a chance against Florida, but, and I may be wrong because I don't know the rosters like y'all do, but, you know, we were a Hail Mary away, you know, or, or touchdown away last year down there at their place. You know, have the rosters changed that much on the two teams to where we shouldn't have an opportunity to beat them at home and, and that be a real opportunity for him to get, you know, his first, you know, signature win? But anyways... Y'all talk a little bit about all those things, and have a great day. Hey, thank you. Great phone call. Really appreciate that. Uh, you know, I look at Bush Jones' second year, and Bush Jones inherited a worse mess than Jeremy Pruitt uh, there in 2013. But Jeremy, Jeremy Pruitt, uh, this roster is better. I look at the 2014 season under Bush Jones, and we got out coach against Florida, lost 10 to nine, and you are a play or so from beating Georgia. That's two extra wins. You had a chance to win nine games right there. In that season, in Butch Jones' second season. And then the third season should have been SEC champions uh, because you were a year early. Uh, you had Oklahoma beat. You had, I don't even want to go. You, you had a chance to, to do something special in 2015. And then 16 happened. So that's, that was year two to see um, some significant progress under Butch Jones. And I look at Pruitt. I don't think Dale Pollock was unfair in saying that we should see uh, his stamp. I'm looking forward to seeing Butch, uh, you know, Pollock, not Pollock, but Pruitt's stamp in year one. I want to see his stamp. Mm -hmm. We're going to see his stamp. You, if you're going to play, you're going to have the right mentality. Marquez Callaway said it when he spoke to the media, is that they did some toughness drills very early. This team is going to be tough. If you're not tough, you're not going to play. And – Pruitt made that very clear after the Orange and White game, and he was disgusted and mentioned, oh, yeah, we got about 20-something guys coming in. We, we ready for these guys to come in because if these guys don't understand the standard of what we're trying to lay down here at Tennessee, then they won't play. So I think we're going to see Pruitt stamp this year, but we also understand he has to have his players. Uh, that's very, very important uh, to, to do that. But, yeah, I think we'll see the difference – this year. Next year, I want to see, and I had this conversation with someone yesterday, late last night, I want to see Tennessee compete for an SEC championship in the East next year. What do I mean by that? I do not want to see 41 to nothing. I don't, I don't want to see you out the game by two or three um, possessions. Games in the SEC come down to four or five or six plays the entire game. If we lose those games, it needs to be because of those few plays. We don't need to be out of the game from the opening snap. I want to see that in the second year. It may not translate to an East title, but I want us right there punching Florida in the mouth, punching Georgia in the mouth, punching South Carolina in the mouth, knocking on the door. And then year three, absolutely, I expect us to win um, the East because – of these players that these guys are bringing in, they're evaluating, that they're coaching up and developing, I expect us to win the East in year three. I do. And I expect us to fight like hell in year two um, to push all the opponents right there in the East. That's what I'm expecting because I expect that from good coaches and I expect that from a program that is pulling in the right direction, that's providing resources that prove needs to be successful. I expect that from our program. I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of saying next year. I'm tired of saying three years from now. I'm tired of it, just like y'all are. Let's go back to the phones. We've got Steve in Georgia and then Turkey Man and then Rev. Steve in Georgia, my man. Steve, good morning. Hey, good morning, Swain. Listen, uh, being down here in the middle of Georgia, let me tell you about the most miserable and fickle fan base that ever walked the planet. I live with these jokers. They had Mark Rick, a 10-win-a-year coach, recruiting, you know, top five classes. Mark Rick, who was a godly man, a man of faith, and they attacked every single one of those things mm. for his last two years here. Mm -hmm. They had billboards up, fire mm. Mark Rick. Mm -hmm. They get on they get on their YouTube channels talking about his faith. Now, they're talking about the man's faith is the reason why he can't win a championship because he's too soft. Mm. I guess when you believe in, you know, when you believe in, and, and, and Jesus, you know, you, you're too soft. Mm. Um, you know, yeah. And then they're going to sit there and they're going to talk about Mark Rick. Need, we need to go over there and get moving vans and get him out. They need to afford. That's all they said, Swain. So I think when Murray and Pollock, who, by the way, Pollock looks like he needs to be on the walking dead anyway. 
But whenever Murray and Pollock get in there and they start talking all this trash about disrespect, they need to look at their own fan base. Mm. They need to look at some of their own players. Some of their own players were talking out about Rick. So, you know what, I, I just think that, you know, whenever the shoe's on the other foot and they have a chance to take a jab at Tennessee, they're doing it. But I just sit here and listen to all this trash that they're talking, and I know, Dwayne, I live in the dead center middle of Georgia. You can't get no more in Bulldog country. And these jokers down here, first year Kirby Smart lost to Butch Jones. He ain't the right guy. Mm. You need to fire him. So, you know what, I have no respect for anybody that wears that G that talks all this trash about Pruitt. Because they ain't even looked inside folks. And I'm going to let you go, Frank. Great phone call. Bring in the yeah. funk. Bring in the funk right there. Pretty much nailed it. Steve in Georgia. Um, was Pruitt disrespectful in that in a, in a coaching staff setting? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah pro- probably. <laughs> probably because Mark Rick is the head coach. Probably. You know, sh- you know, probably. But, again, you brought him in because you wanted to win a championship. You knew what you were getting. So, um, good call there, Steve. All right, let's go to Turkey, Turkey Man. Man. Turkey Man, good morning. Good morning, individuals. Good morning, individual. Hey, I tell you what, I'm hungry. I like that. You should I'm go hungry. to Dead End. You hungry? Well, so today yeah. Dead End is the uh, Bernie Mac skillet. I heard that, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm hungry. You want I'm some co- hungry. You want some cornbread? I want some cornbread. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you what, uh, uh, if there's any any doubt in anybody's mind how Tennessee fans should feel about who won the national championship game, it was all answered clear as a bell in the last day or two. What do you, what do you mean, Steve? Who won the championship game? Well, between Georgia and Alabama, who a Tennessee fan should want to win that game uh, it neither. was clear as a bell. Well, I know that, but I'm telling you what. Neither. It, w- it would have been terrible. Let me stop you. Don't even. Would, don't even do uh, it. it neither. It would, uh, it, it would have been terrible if they if Georgia had won. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No doubt about it. It, it, it would have been, been worse been. for Tennessee fans if Georgia won than Alabama. I agree with you there. That, that's what I'm. But wanting. About. But wanting them to win. No. Wanting the team to win. No, I ain't doing that. Yeah, I'm just telling you. I just I, I weighed I weighed when that was played. Which way could I stand stand the winner to be? And and that was I could stand better in Alabama than I could Georgia. I understand because that. I know I know that I know as a no as a no that that fan base down there and that bunch down there in Georgia. Uh, Seth Stokes has preached it for years. He knows it. TC has too. He knows it. All, everybody that lives down there in Georgia knows it. They will turn on uh, Kirby Smart if if things go wrong and go south for him real quick. They will turn on him like I'll get out. He's fine and dandy right now. But I tell you what, first time somebody hits him in the mouth hard, and when they ain't up to ready to play for him, and hits him in the mouth hard, and then hits him in the mouth hard, and takes it to them when maybe they shouldn't take it to them, the uh, wheels are going to fall off down there real fast. Well, and they will, well, they will get on them, each other. Well, let's keep it real, Turkey Man. Uh, most fan bases would do that. You know, most Absolutely. Yeah, and, that and, one, and that one there is if, in if Pruitt If Pruitt is not winning in, in year three, we going to do it. I mean, it's just it's, it's, well, it's one of those things you look at and and, – and, and, and you look at other fan bases, but you know we are pretty much the same. And people, people were dogging Nick Saban when Nick Saban lost to Auburn, you know, well, last year in 2013. So yeah, I mean, well, that's, we're that's passionate. True, but but they're, but the, but these these are different. These people being passionate, yeah, and barking at people. No, nah, nah, that's barking at people. No, nah, we ain't doing that. Now. We don't we that's, don't do that. No, nah, we, we not barking not, at people. No, and nah. we we don't do what do what they're doing in that regard. Now we may. We may be what we are, and we want to win, and we have a desire to win. But I guarantee you, if if we see a guy doing doing right, we're gonna stand by him, and we don't we don't accept mediocre or 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 being lied to or being trying to pee down our breeches leg and tell them it's raining. We don't handle that <laughs> no, real well at all. We don't, don't handle that real well at all. No, I'm with you, but Turkey man. We don't want any carny barkers. No, we don't. But I just tell you what, uh, I, I I enjoyed Paul. Uh, uh, you could tell 
that he'd had about all he could handle of that. And I enjoyed that uh, for a change to see somebody turn and say, you're wrong, uh, take a seat, because you wasn't even there. And and you're dealing with, with stuff that doesn't even affect you. I like but it. I, but I'm, I'll tell you one thing I did get tickled at. I just couldn't help it. Uh, they showed they showed the Missouri's uh, offensive coordinator and, and them big glasses and stuff, and I'm thinking, oh gosh, the, uh, if <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> I just I just I couldn't help it. I'm in the picture for a thousand words, and then I got excited about uh, uh, saving. He got all in gas cans and what he was going to do with them, and I realized he had he had an intern to to fill them up, so. I, I get excited about that too. That's right. <laughs> guys, I, have a good. One. That's right, Turkey Man. All right, man, have a good one. I loved it yesterday. Drew Locke. He got asked about Derek Dooley. Like, hey, it's, you know, how do you, how do you feel like Derek Dooley in his new offense? Drew Locke. His response was, "Ah, uh, his the way that he conducts the the offense is is definitely different." <laughs> that was his response. The best <laughs> the best Dooley note yesterday was the fact that he will be wearing gold pants. This year. I saw that. <laughs> oh boy! Ah oh, boy! Please don't do a special on his pants, ESPN. Please. All right, let's get to uh, Rev. Rev, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we doing this morning? Doing wonderful. How doing are you, well. my friend? Man, I'm tired. I'm trying to make it home here in North Carolina. Man, trying to drive back to Knoxville. Well, come uh, on, man. Come on, be careful. I'm. These some of dead ends. Well, I need. I'm, I've been driving all week. Come on. About three thousand miles in this week. Uh. I want to talk about Pollock and uh, good old good old Aaron Murray here. All right, go you for know, it. Some, some of their comments kind of kind of struck me and made, made me laugh a little bit of how much they don't know. Uh, as far as Pollock, I found that a little bit unprofessional and petty to call out a person's character without putting any context behind it. Correct. And I understand kind of why he couldn't on national TV, you know, because mm-hmm. he wasn't there and whatnot. But as far as Aaron Murray's comments about how Pruitt's personality don't don't fit a head coach because the head coach has to interact with boosters and interact with the president and whatnot. So when you tell me this, what first time head coach in charge of a big time program coming straight from the coordinator position knows how to do all that? Not many. That's why his comments didn't make a lot of sense. And, and, it, and, and it was so, per- it was re- really apparent how personal they were <laughs> because how Pruitt acted at Georgia was as if he was a coach. That's why people think it was disrespectful mm-hmm. because he would, you know, he would try to override Mark Rick, who was a head coach. That's that's where the disrespectful stuff comes in in the play. And who does Pruitt have as a resource to help him do all this in his first year as a head coach? I don't know. That's been there in his shoes. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not, I've never heard of this guy before. I'm just, Me either. You know. Uh, know. And as far as far as Pollock saying that, you know, does Pruitt know his place? Does did, does, does Pollock not know who the, the AD is here, the mm. battle captain? Does, yeah, the, does Pollock forget who who the defensive coordinator was in Tennessee when the battle captain was in charge? Because mm. as far as, you know, I, I remember Chief. He was, woo <laughs> He was fiery, boy. Yeah. I tell you mm-hmm. what. <laughs> Still you don't is. think battle captain knows how to deal with that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, That's I, I all think... I got to say. I think I'll, I'll hang up and hey, thank you, Rev. I think uh, I think Jordan Pruitt has the right resources on how to be a a head coach off the field. The question that we have, and Charlie, you brought this up during the break, is Coach Fulmer is not going to be able to help Jeremy Pruitt in the moment if Pruitt emotionally has an outburst on the sideline dealing with the referees. Um, you know, dealing with the coaches on the headset. Um, <laughs> Butch Jones on the headset, talking to his coaches, was threatening, threatening to fire folks while the game was going on because he was so upset. Instead of worrying about the next play, like he was on the headset just and rambling. And let me add to that. He also degraded a trainer on the sideline. He also said, well, what did he say, F them all to the fans? During the game. Oh, yeah. I heard all the excuses he also, for him re- on that one. That remember was, the uh, 2013 Georgia game where the Smoky Drays and Pig Howard fumble? The way he went after that ref on one of those calls? Remember yeah, that? The he way just, he threw his headset he, through yeah, his he temper just, tantrum? He just wasn't focused. 
<clears throat> Correct. The point is, all coaches get heated on the sideline at one point or another. And with Jeremy Pruitt being a first-time head coach, it will happen. He will. I mean, he said it yesterday. He said, 10 years from now, I will be a better head coach than I will be this fall. You know, we see Nick Saban have his outbursts. But he puts his head, headset on right quick, and he gets back into his mode. Gerald Harrison, new AD at Austin P. when talking about Coach Former, one thing he said he learned from Coach Former is how – to be even kill when it's good things going on, when it's bad things going on. That is a quality that you must possess. Look at Jay Wright in Villanova. The game-winning championship shot against North Carolina, he doesn't even flinch. Cold as ice. That is the type of composure that you want to have as a head coach because guess what? You want your team to react to, the same way to you take do. on your personality and to be composed when you're down 14 points in the fourth quarter. Uh, when you have a turnover and you want to bounce back, you want your team to be com- compo- to have composure too. So you can't act like that on the sideline. That is something we don't know how Pruitt it will be. But as far as the off the field stuff, dealing with boosters, how to talk to the media, Coach Former can help him in, the, in, the, in that area. Swain and Vince, stay with us. By now, you know that Muya has the best burgers in Knoxville. Their beef is never frozen, they have all-natural turkey burgers and black bean veggie burgers, not to mention they make their buns in-house every day. But now, you can also get 100% all-beef hot dogs or, wait for it, all-natural chicken sandwiches. Trust me, these chicken sandwiches put chicken restaurants to shame. So stop into Muya and taste the difference. Located at 7301 Kingston Pike, right by Better Match. VFL's Jason Swain and Todd Kelly here with our Men on Football and Smoothie segment. Let's discuss some of our favorite smoothies and how they impact our lives. TK, man, tell me which smoothie comes to mind when you think about playing defense. Swain O, the Peanut Butter Power Plus and the Power Punch Plus provide the energy needed to make plays every time they take the field. Then you have the Gladiator and the Hulk. Nutrition every dominant player has to have. Bottom line, everyone wants to be a dominant player. Now, Swain, you tell me about the offensive side of the ball. TK, it's simple. You always score with Smoothie King. The shredder personifies what we are going to do to opposing defenses. The berry punch and activator will light up the scoreboard. And in case we need to go into overtime, the pure recharge will put us over the top for the win. Swain, oh, you know I love football and Smoothie King. I'm a VFL, a Smoothie King for life. The chocolate gladiator and the chocolate shredder with the scoop of peanut butter. Oh, that's my go-to smoothie. They get a chest bump all day. Yes, sir. This concludes our Men on Football and Smoothie King segment for today. Don't forget the Sip by Sip program. Use Smoothie King as a meal replacement five or more times a week, and you will feel and see the difference. Smoothie King, the healthy alternative to fast food. Delicious and nutritious. TK. Don't forget the peanut butter. Yeah, boy. Touchdown or turnover is up next on the Swain event. All right, team, listen up. It's tailgating time again in Tennessee. But most importantly, team, you're going to need to refi that tailgate and the truck it's attached to. With a refinanced auto loan with Alcoa Tan Federal Credit Union with their Got That promotion, they'll give you up to $500 for your debt. I see, coach. That's right, Johnny. Alcoa Tan will pay you up to $500 for your debt. Now, let's get out there and spread the word. Say it with me. Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan. ATFCU is an equal housing lender. Touchdown or Turnover is backed by Alcor 10 Federal Credit Union, a place where you belong. Touchdown Turnover, backed by Alcoa 10 Federal Credit Union, a place where you belong, better rates and better service, atfcu.com. Uh, make sure to take advantage of their Got Debt campaign going on right now. Alcoa 10 Federal Credit Union. Touchdown 
or turnover. Let's see where we go today. Let's go to Tennessee football. And Jeremy Pruitt uh, made comments about the running backs and spoke about how it need, you need six players and we've seen the gains in um, the weight with our running backs and really across the roster. Um, touchdown or turnover, we will see more than five running backs get handoffs this year. More than more than five. I mean, and I'm not talking about okay, we plan, you know, East T, you know, ETSU and this, you know, it's talking a, about important carries. I'm talking about significant carries. Do we see five running backs? Let me ask you this. In the rotation, does like a jet sweep to Tyler Bird count because on the stat sheet that counts as a handoff? Because in no. that situation, I do think you'll see no, because, five guys. Because he's not a running back. Okay. So, because in that situation, I definitely think you would see. No. Five, five running backs. Okay. So, I, five, I go, yeah, five, the guys who are listed as running backs. Right. Are they involved in getting carries in significant games, meaningful games? Yeah, I go touchdown because you have Ty Chandler, Tim Jordan, uh, Madre London, Jeremy Banks, those are your main four. four. And then I think Trey Coleman yeah. would be the fifth one. So I don't Princeton think – I don't know. Maybe. If Prince and Fant would be an emergency situation, I'd imagine. Uh, I just have a hard time believing that. He's a good athlete. No offense to him. I just have a hard time picturing a, a tight end slash slower receiver being efficient at the running back position, except, especially when you have – Several guys in front of him, oh, so yeah. I think it would be an. If Tennessee is receiving handoffs from Prince and Fan, I think Tennessee's in a really bad situation. Um, it t- it takes a people need to understand. It takes a lot of trust and doing things right in practice to get a handoff to be trusted with the football in a meaningful game. I mean, just look at you. You fumbled your only one, never got it again. You mean my handoff? Well, isn't that, it wasn't really a handoff, isn't nah. it? You pitched it back to Arian or something no. like that? Arian, Arian pitched it to me. That's what it was. That's what it was. Arian. Still mad at Arian for that. <laughs> still, no. I'm still mad at Arian, man. But I go touchdown. Uh, Coach Pruitt said yesterday in the SEC you're going to need a bunch of guys to uh, kind of share the load. It's not necessarily a, a running back position that we see one guy have 30, 40 carries anymore. It's, a, it's several guys, 10, 12, 15 carries, especially – if you don't have that one workhorse, um, like a Derrick Henry that can shuttle the load. Uh, it, plus cares in a right. game. Right, and Tennessee doesn't have one guy that they can lean on. They don't have a John Kelly that we know John Kelly is the guy. I mean, we can think that Ty Chandler will be the guy. We can think that Madre London will be the guy, but I definitely think it's going to be a running back by committee until one person separates himself. But even when one person separates himself, I think um, – Jeremy Banks, Madre London, Trey Coleman, Tim Jordan, Ty Chandler. They all receive at least one valuable handoff in an SEC game or against West Virginia of sorts. Yeah, I'm with you. That's a touchdown for me because I think they're, there's just going to be a, a need for that. Like uh, Pru was saying yesterday, when you're running the ball in this league, if you don't have your your dude, a Damian Harris, um, to tote the rock, yeah, you're going to have to spread it out, and I think – think they they got a, a nice set of running backs actually um probably better than i would have <coughs> thought it would be um before the, the season the running the running back room looks better today on july 19th than it did january 1st yeah oh without a doubt and and madre london is really the the fulcrum there the 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 catalyst um because he he just adds a lot and a lot of experience coming in you know this what is this this would be his fifth year in college football um well, I guess it could be his fourth year if he graduated in three at Michigan State. That's true. But I guess he, he is classified as a redshirt senior. Okay. So, I, you know, making assumptions there. But, um, uh, yeah, I think I think you do see a solid rotation uh, of of guys out of that backfield. That's, that's definitely going to be one of the most compelling things uh, coming into this season is, is that running game. And, uh, obviously, the, the offensive change in general – but how much that running game is, is emphasized, because it sounds like it's going to be a huge, huge part of this offense. I mean, that's hey, that's definitely interesting to look at Mondre, you know, Mondre London and, and put so much um, 
you know, importance on him. And, um, you know, he hasn't even practiced with a helmet yet here at Tennessee. I think he, I think he can add a lot to this, a lot to this running back room experience, being able to run uh, in between the tackles, uh, toughness coming in from a, a, a program that uh, discipline was instilled by Mark D'Antonio, another Nick Saban uh, coach, and so he is going to be uh, very important in that in that meeting room. Um, now, Jeremy Banks is coming in; he, he's fresh, um, but London is coming in, and he pretty much knows what to expect. He's not going to be caught off guard because uh, he was in D'Antonio's um, system there in Michigan State, so he knows the expectations. He knows um, how to carry himself, how to practice, all those things. But I'm telling you right now, Ty Chandler ain't just, ain't just going to bow down to anybody, and it's going to be hard to keep Ty Chandler off the football field because he's so explosive. And we don't have a ton of explosive players on the offensive side of the football, it's not as much. Marquez Callaway. Yeah, not as much as we want. Now we do have some really good players. You know, we do have Jawan Jennings, who's a good player, but he ain't explosive like a Callaway. He's not explosive uh, like a Chandler. I can tell you that right now. So, uh, running back, the running back room is going to be fun to watch. But I, I say, um, I say touchdown. I think um, you know you have injuries that occur, and so you're going to have uh, plenty of opportunities for guys to get uh, extra carries in that room. So I go touchdown. I think five guys will be used getting carries in, in, in significant, meaningful games. I know it's kind of irrelevant because it's a new coaching staff, but last year only four received relevant carries. Uh, John Kelly, obviously, Ty Chandler, Carlin Fields and me, and then Tim Jordan, he had 11 carries. I know several were in that Kentucky game when John Kelly was suspended. And then Trey Coleman did have four carries, but I'd go out on a limb and say that those were probably against – the lesser opponents, the UMass uh, of the world. So I would say out of that group, do not sleep on Tim Jordan. He, he to me, is at, at this point, is he, he's almost not a sleeper. I think that's that information has kind of become known. Is that, he's that a he's, sleeper within the SEC. He's not a sleeper within the Tennessee fan yeah, base. Yeah, if, if you've been paying attention, you know that, that Tim Jordan can be, I think, can be that dude. I think the, where you really have to look um, in terms of maybe how – much of a load is kind of spread throughout the running back room is at USC stats uh, last year. And it looks like four separate running backs last year uh, received significant carries uh, for USC. Obviously, you have Ronald Jones, uh, the second, who is an absolute stud. Um, he ran for over 1,500 yards. And then they had two freshman running backs um, have over 50 carries. And then they had a junior running back, 49 carries. So it looks like last year. Uh, Tyson Helton slash T. Martin uh, used four different backs. And obviously that may be different this year. Or we don't really know. I'd like to imagine that it's kind of Tyson Helton's decision uh, to be, if they choose to be run heavy, you, you, to be run heavy. But Jeremy Pruitt will have a big say in it. You got you to gotta be, you gotta be uh, a, a, a offense that uses multiple running backs if you're yes. going to uh, be, be a downhill physical football team. Uh, Pruitt said it. I mean, it's – you're going to take those hits, and you got to bring in running backs who are fresh. you got to bring in running backs who are healthy. And because of the style of play that we're going to play on offense, you're going to have more guys maybe dinged up uh, during the course of a football game, not so much uh, because of um, you know, a lack of preparation with the strength and conditioning or the medical staff, but just in the course of a football game, you're going to need more uh, able bodies because you're going to play a more physical brand. So, uh that was that was really really good to hear from from Pruitt, eight six five two hundred fifty five, oh three. Nick Saban spoke highly of Jaron Pruitt. Not anything new. We know Nick Saban spoke highly of Derek Dooley when he was here, but uh, Saban said that he did a fantastic job for us. He was always very respectful and very loyal. So. Uh, there you go. We also heard good things from Kirby Smart and Jimbo Fisher about their time working for working with uh, Jeremy Pruitt. Pruitt shared a really funny story about um, how he had to basically help Kirby Smart's wife when she was pregnant. Um, she was going into labor, and Kirby Smart was 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 on the road, wasn't there, and uh, he had to basically take it to the hospital. So, uh, really good stories there from uh, Pruitt himself and about prove from other other coaches but uh, what stood out yesterday was obviously mark uh, mark rick 
uh, players defending him and attacking uh, Jeremy Pruitt. And I'll tell you this right now. I said this yesterday on Twitter. I love that the opposing fan base hates our coach. I want them to hate our coach more and more and more because everyone hates Nick Saban. We hated Steve Spurrier when he was at Florida. Alabama hated Coach Former when he was here coaching. If you're hated, that means you're doing something right. You're winning. Why do we hate James Franklin? Because he beat us and rubbed our faces in it, and we didn't like it. That's why. We don't hate Derrick Mason because he's not threatening. I want people to hate Tennessee again, and yesterday was a really good sign. Swain Events, stay with us. Craving homemade flavors that don't take hours in the kitchen? Mrs. Grissom's cheese spreads and chicken salads are the perfect go-to. Ready-to-eat meals and snacks found in the meat or dairy section at the grocery store with flavors of home in every bite. Whether you crave the classic Mrs. Grissom's pimento cheese or the gold gluten-free select cranberry pecan chicken salad, enjoy the sweet taste of a home-cooked meal in every container. Select the best. Select Mrs. Grissom's. Fellas, when it comes to your health and quality of life, knowing your numbers is essential. Low testosterone can make you feel tired and grumpy. It can raise your cholesterol and cause weight gain and lose muscle mass. At Low T Center, they make it quick and easy to get your levels checked. Treatment is even covered by most health insurance with results in about 20 minutes. Call 865-392-1388 or go to LowTCenter.com. JC's Tree and Landscaping Service specializes in quality tree work done at an affordable price. Trimming and removing trees are their specialty. They also offer other services like land clearing, stump grinding, crane services, and all of your basic landscaping needs for both commercial and residential. JC's will give you a free estimate and beat any written quote by a competitor to guarantee that you get the lowest price around. Don't risk your land with a fly-by-night service. JC's Tree and Landscaping is licensed and insured. Give them a call at 865-599-3799. Pass downfield is complete. That's Wayne. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Give him six. Touchdown. There is a 30% chance of rain today, partly sunny with a high of 89 and a low around 69. Georgia sucks. Tomorrow, there is a 40% chance of showers, partly sunny with a high around 89 and a low near 70. Pollock's a whiny girl. Saturday, showers and thunderstorms likely, mostly cloudy with a high in the mid-80s. Air Murray's clueless. Weather on the Swain event is brought to you by Be Dry. If your basement is wet or cracked, Be Dry can help. BeDry.com. Do you have cracks in your foundation? a wet basement, or a nasty, leaky crawl space? Our listeners have heard about them on the Swain event for over a year, and now it's time to make the call. Give B-Dry Waterproofing and Foundation Repair the opportunity to fix your home's problem. Since 1958, that's right, nearly 60 years, B-Dry has been solving basement, crawl space, and foundation problems throughout the country. B-Dry only uses high-quality materials from reputable manufacturers. They back their installations with some of the best warranties in the industry to provide homeowners with added peace of mind. They are truly an A-plus company. Whenever you start experiencing a wet basement, leaky crawl space, or a cracked foundation, remember these three words. Better call B-Dry. Reach out to B-Dry today at 865-662-5238 to schedule your free appointment. That's 865-662-5238. Remember, better call B-Dry. When I made the move to my own studio, I was worried about this. I was worried about that. I was worried about, hey, did I get this piece of equipment? Did I get that piece of equipment? Does that sound good? Does that not sound good? One thing I didn't have to worry about, that was office furniture because office furniture outfitters met my furniture needs. With a 50,000 square foot facility, they have East Tennessee's largest selection and are the best value for new and used office furniture. Located in Knoxville, it's easy to find everything you need for your new space, including desks, file cabinets, chairs, conference tables, and more. Office Furniture Outfitters is turnkey. They came to my place, we mapped everything out that was needed, they delivered, and get this, 
set everything up. To learn more about what Office Furniture Outfitters can do for you, log on to OFONOX.com. That's OFONOX.com. Hey Annie, you're the spokesperson for Toyota Knoxville, right? That's right. Why should I buy from Toyota Knoxville? Are you looking for new or used vehicles? Does it matter? No, because Toyota Knoxville has over 390 new Toyotas on the ground and over 350 pre-owned vehicles available to choose from. Okay, so big selection. And a lifetime warranty at no charge on all new and select pre-owned vehicles. A lifetime warranty. A non-factory limited lifetime powertrain warranty with unlimited miles. Plus 30 years of experience in Knoxville, not just serving our customers, serving our community. And the buying experience? Hello, it's Toyota Knoxville. Read the reviews. Talk to anybody that's been there. Okay, okay. Where am I going? Toyota Knoxville is at I-40 and the Lover Road exit. Go to Parkside Drive. You can't miss it. Can I tell them Annie sent me? I wish you would. If you're passionate about the car you drive, come meet the people that are passionate about the way they sell at Toyota Knoxville. ToyotaKnoxville.com. Warranty good at participating dealers. Butch Jones replacing Philip Fulmer on the Jumbotron. For what? People getting drunk and stumbling into the wrong house. For what? Butch saying a chart told him to kick an extra point instead of going for two. For what? People who break the law while breaking the law. For what? All right, it's time for For What here in the Swain event. Fuel by Daddy and Barbecue. Top 100 barbecue restaurant in America, 865-200-5503 is our telephone number here. I think um, what should be pretty easy today, but um, Ben, what you got there? You, I'm, look, I'm, you look ready to go. Oh, I'm ready to go. I've uh, been ready to go since yesterday afternoon when Larry Fedora uh, delivered some idiotic, insensitive comments uh, revo- uh, regarding CTE concussions, the game of football. Um, saying that I fear that the game will get pushed so far to one extreme that you won't recognize the game 10 years from now. That's what I worry about, and I do believe that if it gets to that point that our country goes down too. What in the bleepity bleep are you talking about? I'm Look, I love football just as much as anybody, but if football didn't exist, our country would still be standing and would still be flourishing to some extent. How dare you, Ben? Football is the only thing that binds this country together. Because here's the thing. While everybody listening, football is their pride and joy, there are sports fans like myself who I could live without football if I absolutely had to in the sense of I'd have uh, the Grizzlies I could watch. I would have the Preds that I could watch. I'd have Tennessee basketball that I could watch. I'd have Major League Baseball, the Yankees that I could watch. The World Cup still happens last I checked. There's still golf tournaments on the weekend. The British Open is this weekend. Wimbledon. My point is there's so many other sports that I could watch, even if football didn't exist, that, quite frankly, would keep our country going. People um, that and I at s- the end of the day, sports doesn't – sports don't mean a thing when it comes to their real life. So people that I saw defending Larry Fedora, which seemed kind of crazy to me uh, because his – his comments at best were just over the top. Uh, we're saying that the decline of a football and the you know the growing softness of football just follows the the wussification of America. Now I agree, there has been a growing movement of wussification in America. Just look at you. I look at me. Oh my no, but I can't. I mean that that is that's serious. You know everybody gets a gets a trophy. You know there's no such thing as gender. All of this. You know stuff that everybody is 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 trying to push on everyone else all of the time. Yeah, that's a thing. And it's not good for America in my opinion. I'm not going to go into all that. But there like there is a difference between the the decline of football and trying to increase player safety. That's that's the biggest problem that I had with Larry Fedora. All that's really trying to happen in football right now from from the administration standpoint is that they're trying to increase player safety. Maybe it comes off as like a wussification of football, but I want these dudes to be safe. This is a sport that's played for fun. And, you know, you shouldn't send these guys out there to go and bang their head to the point where when they're they're 30, they can't remember their own child's name. His his comments were insensitive to the the subject matter. And, I mean, he, you know, when when he said that he, there's been no proof that CTE has a link in football. There is a link to CTE in football. There is. There There has only been correlation. There is no proven causation 
that much is true. But when you have this huge number of, of football players that have CTE, and it's not happening to NBA players, it's not happening to golfers, it's not happening to you know who, who are baseball players. Well, what is it then? If it's not linked to football, <laughs> like what? What is it? That that seemed like such an insane comment to me. I. It was ridiculous. Larry Fedora just needs to he was needs on to cool it, man. He was on something yesterday, in my opinion. He just needs to shut up. That's, I mean, that is that is simple as as that. Uh, athletes are getting bigger, stronger, faster. The fields have not expanded, and so when you get hit by someone who's 6'3", 265 pounds, and running four five. That's different than it was 25, 35 years ago. Um, science is different. The, the way we study uh, the game of football is different. And so, yeah, we're learning things that we didn't know 20 years ago. And what Larry Fedora said was just, was just idiotic. It was stupid. It was insensitive. Um, I mean, but what, what do you expect – uh, from a guy whose name is Herbert. His real name is Herbert. <laughs> Herbert Lawrence Fedora. That's, that's hilarious. His Herbert real name is Fedora. His name is Herbert. Named after the dumbest of hats. <laughs> so, um, just 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 a really bad bad moment for Larry Fedora, North Carolina football. Uh, yesterday at media days. Why are you even having a media day on the same day as SEC? Media days. I mean, do you even care about I think any, any 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 uh, PR? Any I, any attention on your program? Or I know. Conference? I don't want to say that every conference is holding their media days right now, but a lot of them are. I know. Yeah. SEC, ACC, Big Twelve, uh, Big too. Twelve. You might as well. I mean, you conference got, USA. You got two weeks to, to until fall mm -hmm. camp, so this is probably the best time to do it. But the for what? The, we have an in-state for what? You may have. You may want to. Wait here a minute. That way you can give oh, it full. That man. way you can give it a ton of credit. Oh, give it no. the attention we, we that need, it deserves. Yeah, we, need, we need. We need. We need to give it time it deserves. You're we right. Need, we need a segment. Yeah. Yeah. We need at least five minutes because yeah, this, this is a good one. This is a good one. This is the end state for what? Mm -hmm. I don't. I honestly don't know where you're going with this one. This I think we are. Are we looking at the same thing? Yeah. This is the end okay. state for what? I'm gonna let you read it though because I saw it yesterday too. Um, but we will. We will save it. Until after the break. Are we putting Vanderbilt on for it? What? They're, Why? they're a perpetual for it. I'm not listening, man. <laughs> Unless they do something stupid like claim a state championship, I'm leaving Vanderbilt alone. We lost to them. Not in basketball. Yep, not in basketball. We swept them. Take that. Yeah. We trashed their arena, too. That's right. Throwing little small kernels of popcorn all over your arena. Swain event. Be right back. Now you know that Muya has the best burgers in Knoxville. Their beef is never frozen. They have all natural turkey burgers and black bean veggie burgers. Not to mention they make their buns in house every day. But now you can also get 100% all beef hot dogs or, wait for it, all natural chicken sandwiches. Trust me, these chicken sandwiches put chicken restaurants to shame. So stop in the Muya and taste the difference. Located at 7301 Kingston Pike, right by Better Mattress. The Swain event is brought to you by the Low T Center and LowTCenter.com. Do you know your numbers? Feel like you again. Let us help. 
All right, team, listen up. It's tailgating time again in Tennessee. But most importantly, team, you're going to need to refine that tailgate and the truck it's attached to. With a refinanced auto loan with Alcoa Tan Federal Credit Union with their got that promotion, they'll give you up to $500 for your debt. Are you serious, coach? That's right, Johnny. Alcoa Tan will pay you up to $500 for your debt. Now, let's get out there and spread the word. Say it with me. Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan. ATFCU is an equal housing lender. With the hot weather and humidity comes mosquitoes and other pests. Let Southeast Termite and Pest Control take care of that problem for you. They offer one-time or package treatments that control biting adults as well as larvae. Southeast Termite and Pest Control has been in business since 1971 and is local and family-owned. They offer free estimates and quotes with no obligations. So don't get bit anymore. Go with the pest control company you can trust. Call Southeast Termite and Pest Control at 865-925-3700 or find them online at southeasttermite.com. For a replay of each day's Swain Event TV, like us on Facebook. Charlie, what are you doing? Yeah, man, we on, we on the air. What are you doing over there, man? Thanks for the warning. He's over there stretching. What are you about to do, man? Th- thanks for the warning. You're about to run a 40? Warning, Ben. You could have said, hey, we're coming back or something like that. I did, actually. No, stretch, stretch my back out. Stretch, you was over there stretching. Yeah, stretch my back out. I did. I'm an old man. I did give you a warning while you walked outside and were doing some yoga in the driveway. Ah, uh, that yeah, that is what I was doing. I definitely wasn't. There is a, the see, you brought that. Uh, I don't know why I can't think of the name of it right now. The ball? <laughs> the the big workout ball that's yeah, workout, over here in the corner, but that's not the name of it. It's not workout ball. I don't know that. Does that have a particular name? I mean, I'm sure it does. Maybe. I yeah, know. I know the 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 big ones. I think it's just the the, the big the, the big ones that people use for uh, you know doing squats and you know power cleans and you know doing abs. Those are medicine balls. But that's just simply a, a workout ball. An exercise ball. Yeah, simply exercise an exercise ball. ball, workout ball, yeah. yeah. That I that I keep here in the uh in the office to try to get a little work in. I mean, while I'm while I'm while I'm while I'm watching T V. Gotta get that six pack. Yeah, man. Trying to get a little work in a little bit. Got the weights right there. Doing a little bit. That is that was work. such a two thousand and eighteen thing to say. What's that? Get a little workout in while I watch T V. Get a little workout in, man. <laughs> get a little workout in. You know. I was watch ESPN and and um S C network. You watching Paul? Watching my boy Paul. Paul Fine Bomb. Fine Bomb. Come on, Fine Bomb. Tell me this, Fine Bomb. Paul. This whole time, this whole time, I ain't know you was a Tennessee fan like that, Paul Fine. I I love. So I I listened to Fine Bomb the last few days, and what I love is that so many of the callers call in, and their their cadence is like they're about to tell Paul, like they're about to inform him, like they're like, listen, Paul. I'm gonna and you know and they launch into whatever and and always it's just something dumb. I, th- <laughs> Most I think of the uh, time. <laughs> I think you should call in the Fine Bomb show today, Charlie. Maybe I should. I'll call in as Chuck. Chuck from Chuck the Ginger. Chuck, Chuck B. from Maryville. Chuck yeah, Chuck B. Chuck B from Knoxville. Uh call in as DN. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Um, you almost got him, Ben. You almost got him. <laughs> Well, I use the internet a lot, so that won't work. Almost. Do you, Charlie? Almost. Almost. <laughs> um, but I, I just think that that's funny because they, they always just – it. so many of those those callers come in, it sounds like they're, I'm going to inform you, Paul. I don't know if you knew. He knows. He knows. He's Paul He's Paul Feinbaum. <laughs> he yeah. knows whatever you're about to tell him. Uh, but anywho. Uh, earlier in the show, um, it, was, it, was, it was mentioned – I'm not. I'm not sure if it was a caller or one of one of us who said this that Jeremy Pruitt is um, inheriting a, a, a team. And oh yeah, it was a caller uh, from Chattanooga who said that uh, the team um, was you know soft, and um, a lot of that is a lot of that is true. Uh, 
mentally these guys were, were beat down, uh, not as confident as you need to be to play at this level. Uh, we got some talented players, but because they were told how they're not good, some of them started to believe it, and it took for some of our coaches to really um, boost their morale and let them know, hey, no, no, you're you're good. This is, but this is how, this is why each and every day is so important. This is how you need to work. This is how you need to um, go about your business in the weight room and, and on the football field. No, you're a good player, but this is what we need to do to take you to the next level. Um, so. Uh, some of it is, yeah, man. We, you know, we had some entitlement. We um, had some softness, but other uh, things that this coach staff has had to do is really kind of boost the confidence of some of our players who didn't know if they were good enough to play at this level, and they are. So we still have time. You know, I'm glad we don't play this week. We still have plenty of time. We still got what a month and a half before we before we really play. So. Um, there's, there's plenty of time to continue to build toughness, to find out who your studs are, to find out who are the guys that you can count on there in the fourth quarter. I thought it was very interesting to to hear Gene Chizik's comments. Uh, I, I love me some Gene Chizik with the SEC Network. He, he is honest. He's, ref, you know, he's very f- refreshing. I remember last year that uh, he kept talking about, which continued, that he would be sitting up, up there next to him this year. Funny. Um, Gene Chizik talked about Jerry Guantano. And he feels like that Jarrett has the locker room. Um, and Keller Chris coming in, although may have the, the most experience, but, but Jarrett has the most time spent with his teammates and with his wide receivers and his, and his, and his offensive skill players. So uh, that was very interesting to hear from Gene Chizik. Gene Chizik also talked about um, the dynamic of, of, of how coordinators – work with their head coach. When they were talking about John Chavis at Arkansas and Chad Morris has this this system in place offensively that they put up points, they like to go up tempo. Well, that's good, but that that can affect your defense. It can affect practice and not having enough time to slow down and teach. If you went to a Tennessee football practice during the spring, the first thing that you would notice is there's no music during instruction. How in the hell can you study for a test if there's music blasting in the background? How can you study for an exam when there's all tons of distractions? That's why during exam time, when Ben used to go to the library, it was packed. It was always packed because it's quiet. Library, what's that? you 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 can focus. You can lock in. You go to practice in the last couple of years, and there's, you know, there's Drake crying. Why are you trying to get instruction on what to do from from the head coach? You know, you got, you know, future mumbling. You know, you don't know what's going on. How do you listen to what your assignment is when there's a bunch of distractions in the background? But the first thing you notice this spring, it's very quiet. There's your receivers over there. They're teaching. There's your defensive line. Teaching. DBs. Teaching, instruction. Uh, Gene Chizik was talking about in practice. How do you slow down Chad Morris's offensive philosophy so John Chavis can can teach? How do you slow down when you need to so defense can get a rest? So I thought it was really really interesting uh, coming from a head coach who won a championship, who was a very very good defensive coordinator, who stepped away from the game to spend more time with his family. I think Gene Chizik is awesome there on SEC Network, and he was able to provide a lot of perspective um, as to what Jeremy Pruitt was as a defense coordinator, now going to a head coach because he also did that when he went from um, D.C. to head coach at Iowa State and then back to uh, head coach at Auburn. I have have such a hard time listening to Gene Chizik. Not because because of his analysis. I I enjoy his analysis and – all indications is that he's a really good human being. I have a hard time listening to him because every time I look at him, I think of this man went from winning the national championship to three and nine and fired in a split second, faster than Butch Jones forgot to put gas in the boat. I mean, I I, I just can't help but think about that disaster season and them yeah. Yeah. having to play Khalil Frazier, 
who t- ended up becoming a safety against yeah. Vanderbilt well, at I, Vanderbilt and getting and had the, a, had a three, the brains, brains beat in. Had a 3-9 and nine team that the very next year was used by Gus Malzahn to that play in a well. national championship. That is well. <laughs> but, 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 I, but I hate that direction that we're going into because if we do that, then only people who's had a perfect career can talk. No, I'm not saying absolutely. I, I yeah. say that, and I, and I hate that because, like, that's that's what we saw yesterday. It was oh, Aaron Murray and his failed NFL career. He can't talk. Yes, he can. He can talk. I mean, he knows Mark Rick. He played at a high level at Georgia, and he accomplished something that many people don't accomplish, and that is playing in the NFL. He wasn't successful, but really, we're gonna knock him for that, and we're gonna disqualify him from talking. So I guess only Peyton Manning can talk. Yeah, that, that's- I, I just I just hate that. That Peyton that, never won a natty. I hate that we do that. That no. okay, you have to achieve, you know, success at the highest level to be able to say anything. Gene well, Chizik has a lot of perspective. I understand. No, that not you what think, I said. Though. No, I understand. I understand that. I understand. You, you know, that's not what you're saying. I just don't like going down that road. Um, that a coach or a player has to have this pristine career uh, to 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 give some context. Um, or some, some perspective. But, yeah, it's I understand thinking about how Gene Chizik flamed out of Auburn, but he did win a championship. I guess, so I guess. he can speak to being a coordinator, being a head coach, or and playing, playing uh, having a team where your offense coordinator believed in points, 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 uh, plays, 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 and not really value time of possession. So he can he can speak to what was he talking about yesterday. He can't speak to building a power over a 10, you know, 15 year period because he never did that. I guess I was saying I still view Gene Chizik as the head football coach of Auburn rather than I do SEC Network color commentator slash analyst at SEC Media Days. I I still see him as a head coach rather than an analyst. It's weird how how all of those different analysts are viewed, at least by me. I definitely have a different perception of each one based off of the full context of who they are. And, it, cause, yeah, I completely agree, Ben, because what's what's weird is, is like, I think one of the best guys over there is Greg, Greg McElroy. He stirs stuff up and, you know, says – I, I kind of like that about him. Uh, but, but, you know, he was an Alabama quarterback, but I actually like him a lot. But I feel very similar to, similarly to you – with Gene Chizik, where I'm like, this guy kind of sucked as a it's coach. Such a, <laughs> such a, <laughs> so, it's such a weird. He but had, he didn't I suck as a coach. He won a national championship. I just do. I just it's such a weird situation is yes. how I look at it. I it, I don't think he sucked, but, sucked but, as a coach. I mean, I'll I'll 100 percent suck a year. I'll 100 percent give it. All right, Chizik's analysis yesterday was good. I mean, he he is good. I it, uh, he's very charismatic on air. Yeah, I, but I but I think you subconsciously b- start blocking out good nuggets from these guys when you tell yourself, okay, Gene Chizik was, you know, he won three games that year. Okay, but he won a national championship. He may say something that is right. Okay, David Pollock, he played at Georgia, and he may be a homer sometimes. But what if sometimes he's, he drops some truth, but you're so guarded, you already put up that shield, you're not mm-hmm. – ready to receive what he is saying that may be actually accurate. That's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, we, we do that with, with Jordan Rogers. We do that with sometimes uh, Greg McElroy. We only want to listen to people that have something in common with us, or we only want to listen to people that says good thing about us. And I just think sometimes that's dangerous because then you may not hear the correct message from folks that you may not necessarily love. That's all I'm saying. Well, and, you, I mean, you brought up Jordan Rodgers, and actually in the last couple of days, I've really tried, because he's been on there so much, it's yeah, almost yeah, been unavoidable, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I tried to take everything else away and listen to him as an analyst. And like I said, it <laughs> when he talks about Tennessee, it really comes through I, that he I, doesn't. I get that. But but with every almost every other team, he's actually pretty good. He's actually really good. Yeah. Uh, That's not a popular take, but I could listen to Jordan Rogers talk football all he's, day long. He's, he's clear, and concise, and he makes good points. I, even, you know? even when he's talking about Tennessee from an X's and O's standpoint, rather than kind of breaking down their team in general, mm-hmm. like he does a good job of breaking down quarterback play last year with Jared Gorantano and Quentin Dormany when he was playing. I've always enjoyed Jordan Rogers' analysis, but when it comes to kind of breaking down the team as a whole or, or – 
uh, taking a look at the program as a whole, he's not the greatest at it because of his hate for Tennessee. And quite frankly, that's okay. I don't. That doesn't bother me like it bothers other people because he should feel that way. He played at Vanderbilt. He should hate Tennessee. Just like if I was on there, I would. I would hate Alabama. I would hate Georgia. I would hate Florida. I mean, it is. It works all different ways. And I, for me, I've said this before on here. I have a hard time like finding analysts that I don't like. And right now, there isn't one on the SEC network that I just can't stand to hear talk. See, I, I'm very picky when it comes to that stuff there. More more so with guys that call games. There are a lot of announcers I really don't like at all. <laughs> it's just like a lot. This, but Like, this is an unpopular take, and I know you hate the man. Everybody hates Gary Danielson. I enjoy listening God, to him talk about him. football. I mean, I, and maybe it's just me. I can't, like, I can go from – Okay, I'm a VFL. I don't like Florida. I don't like Alabama. I don't like Georgia. I don't like any of them. But when it's time to do the job, it's time to do the job. You do the job, right? Which yeah. is to call it like you see it and be fair. Because at the end of the day, you only get one shot to have credibility, and once you lose it, it's hard to get it back. And so, I would rather be right than look like an idiot. Than 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 allow my emotional feeling take over and cause me to be wrong. That's, but, that's and, and not do the job and be professional. But That's how I see it. There are guys, and there's one example in particular that I'll, I'll make here. There are guys that I can step away and objectively say, that guy's good at his job, but I can't stand him. Uh, the, the one that <laughs> particularly comes to mind is Mark Jones on ESPN. I... I don't know what it is. Even he calls NBA and he calls college football primarily. I, like Mark Jones. I was watching I think him call Grizzly Summer League game he, the other day, and I thought he did a great job. He very purposefully uses big words and things like you. You Charlie, can tell you he do that. You can tell he he just sort of cracked open a dictionary and was like, "I think I'll use magnanimous today." And Charlie, and you it, do he, that. He like fits it, but I, I mean. Not a ton. I, yeah, I, oh, yes, he, you do. I, I just is in the and, – and maybe I'm I'm a hypocrite in this, but it's it's that and it just th – there's just something uh, about Mark Jones that I, I just don't like – I just don't like listening to him. It's something about it that I – like, objectively, I can step away and, and I can say, Mark Jones is good. Like, he, he's good. He's professional. He, he calls the game good, well. How don't you like But him? I just don't – I don't want to hear him call a game. <laughs> I, find that I find that interesting. <laughs> it's just a personal preference thing. I – you know, it's hard to explain, but – All right. That's – Yeah. Every, everyone's entitled to their personal preference. There's no problem with that. I'm just – all I'm saying is just just be aware. Just be – try to be conscious of sometimes – Blocking someone out just because you don't necessarily agree with them, or he they doesn't they don't you know root for your team or he love your team. He's like, uh, like, we always take it to oh he, he hates Tennessee. He, yeah, maybe he's a player, but does he right now? I, I don't know, man. Because I could sit there and say if I was in their position, being a Tennessee guy, I could sit there and call a spade a spade. Like I could do it, but. Again, I'm just speaking for myself. Hey, the biggest compliment to broadcasters and people in journalism is that they hate everybody's school because that means that they're doing something right. Mm -hmm. Correct. That is right. Swain Event, Hour 3, powered by Low T Center, LowTCenter.com. Hour 3 of the Swain Event is brought to you by the Low T Center and LowTCenter.com. Do you know your numbers? Feel like you again. Let us help. At some point in your life, you're going to need an attorney. You need a guy like Jerry Castile with the law firm of Butler, Vines, and Babb. Jerry Castile is East Tennessee born, and he understands what giving his all truly means. To Jared, every case is big, and every client is important. He will aggressively push your case to make sure you are quickly paid every dollar that you deserve. Give Jerry Castile a call, 865-244-3933, and talk with him directly. His office is located at 27. 01 Kingston Pike. So if you've been injured in a car wreck, let Jerry Castile and Butler Vines and Bab fight for you. Hey Annie, you're the spokesperson for Toyota Knoxville, right? That's right. Why should I buy from Toyota Knoxville? Are you looking for new or used vehicles? Does it matter? No, because Toyota Knoxville has over 390 new Toyotas on the ground and over 350 pre-owned vehicles available to choose from. Okay, so big selection. And a lifetime warranty at no charge on all new and select pre-owned vehicles. A lifetime warranty. A non-factory limited lifetime powertrain warranty with unlimited miles, plus 30 years of experience in 
Knoxville, not just serving our customers, serving our community. And the buying experience? Hello, it's Toyota Knoxville. Read the reviews. Talk to anybody that's been there. Okay, okay. Where am I going? Toyota Knoxville is at I-40 and the Lover Road exit. Go to Parkside Drive. You can't miss it. Can I tell them Annie sent me? I wish you would. If you're passionate about the car you drive, come meet the people that are passionate about the way they sell. At Toyota Knoxville. ToyotaKnoxville.com. Warranty good at participating dealers. It's Christmas in July at Better Mattress. Better Mattress has teamed up with Home Depot and with select purchases, you can get a free Weber grill or choose a free adjustable base or a free headboard footboard while supplies last. Better Mattress has brands you know like Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, plus the brand I love, the Better Mattress brand, handcrafted in East Tennessee. Go to Better Mattress and get a free adjustable base free headboard footboard, or free Weber grill while supplies last. Six area locations, BEDRmattress.com. Jason Swain here. June is Men's Health Month. Gentlemen, question, do you know your numbers? You may know your blood pressure and cholesterol, but do you know your testosterone and prostate numbers? I know mine. I went to Low T Center. They made it quick and easy, and you'll know your results in about 20 minutes. And this month, Low T Center is even offering a special $50 testosterone and prostate level test. Gentlemen, don't wait anymore. Call Low T Center today at 865-392-1388 or go to LowTCenter.com. Hour 3 of the Swain event is brought to you by the Low T Center and LowTCenter.com. Do you know your numbers? Feel like you again. Let us help. JC's Tree and Landscaping Service specializes in quality tree work done at an affordable price. Trimming and removing trees are their specialty. They also offer other services like land clearing, stump grinding, crane services, and all of your basic landscaping needs for both commercial and residential. JC's will give you a free estimate and beat any written quote by a competitor to guarantee that you get the lowest price around. Don't risk your land with a fly-by-night service. JC's Tree and Landscaping is licensed and insured. Give them a call at 865-599-3799. Up goes your car insurance. Nobody likes surprises, so switch to Erie Rate Lock. Get a great rate that stays that way even after an accident, ticket, or inflation. In fact, it's locked until you change a car, driver, or your address. Your Erie agent in Knoxville is in SureFit RM. Get a quote at 865-684-4900. That's 865-684-4900. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. We have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones. See? But did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost that it takes to replace it? Well, you can because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, and Sipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike, between Office Depot and Hardy's. Or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technician to see how we can get your phone working today. You're driving home, flashing blue lights in your rearview mirror. You pull over, step out of your car, and the next thing you know, you're being arrested for driving under the influence. Now what do you do? We all should be responsible. But remember, just because you're arrested doesn't mean you're guilty. Call criminal defense and DUI attorney Marcos Garza at 865-540-8300. The investigative teams at the Garza Law Firm know the justice system inside and out. They utilize cutting-edge technologies and investigative methods to prepare your specific case. Before you plead guilty to any criminal charges, call criminal defense and DUI attorney Marcos Garza. Put his number in your phone right now, 865-540-8300, because you never know when you or a friend will need it. Don't say guilty. Say Garza. 865-540-8300. 865-540-8300 and GarzaLaw.com. At work? Can't call in? Don't feel bad. You can talk to the guys on the text box. It's part of the Free Swain Event app.
All right, so we didn't do for what last segment, which is total for what on my part. So uh, let's let's stay in the state of Tennessee, and I'm going to the uh, great state of Virginia after after you, Charlie. But what do we have today for uh, for what from you? It's a story out of Memphis. The headline is: They were on a date until he stole her car to go on another date. Tennessee cop says. <laughs> Uh, many people have a few stories about bad dates they've suffered through the years, lame jokes, awkward dinners, and uncomfortable silences. Uh, but consider this. Has your date ever stolen your car and then used it to pick up a different date on the same night? If so, you and a Memphis woman really have something in common. According to police, uh, Kelton Griffin asked a woman out on Saturday before ditching her to go out to the movies with her god sister. So they were even... He like he went out on a date with a girl that this girl knew that she I mean to be a god sister I would assume that you have to at least be in some kind of close proximity to this person. <laughs> the woman said he just out of the blue texted me and asked me to go out. Faith Pugh said she accepted his offer and he showed up her her house. I don't know who dropped him off. He just got dropped off. So this dude does not do Uber there. He doesn't have a car of his own. <laughs> Police say the two drove to a gas station in the southern area of the city where Griffin asked her to run inside and buy him cigars. When she came back out, he was gone. <laughs> Police said she tried to call Griffin. He didn't answer. And then he deleted her from all of his social media profiles. That's when she got an unexpected text. Griffin just texted me and asked me on a date. I said, okay, send me the address. I'm on my way. And that's when they rendezvoused. And he got, uh, you know, what he deserved, which is arrested. Did he get pulled? Did he get arrested on the sec on the second date? This says uh, Pew's God sister was able to send Pew their location, and police closed in and arrested Griffin on the scene, and he was charged with theft of property. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Good stuff out of Memphis. He, he 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 thought it was funny to set her up that way, but she got the last laugh, without a doubt. She, yeah. Uh, I'm going to oh boy, Sterling, Virginia, at a fitness gym center where a basketball game resulted in one player calling the police after a hard foul during the contest. The foul play, classified as an assault in the incident report, happened at 6.42 p.m. on Monday one player took issue with a foul and went to the front desk in order to call the police, <laughs> according to the report. When the officer arrived, apparently cooler heads had prevailed because neither man was uh, neither man decided to press charges against the other. Did he say? Did the guy get up? He was like, "That's a flagrant. That's a flagrant. Call it, ref." Like what? How? How bad could the foul be <laughs> to prompt this? Were you bleeding? Did you break an arm? It was a like uh, it was a screen is what I was is, is what I read. So he probably a, got knocked down, knocked on his back. Well, you better be blaming your teammate for uh, not setting call, you up. Yeah, for not calling out the screen. <laughs> yeah, screen, you screen, got, screen. You got to call out the ball screen, man. That's his fault. It ain't, it ain't the guy who screened you. My goodness. The, the funniest thing in that video is. The guy taking the video goes out and talks to the cop and is like, have you ever been called <laughs> to a scene for somebody that fouled somebody else? And the cop laughed. Like, the cop yeah. is just like. He, he tried not to. No. He tried not to laugh, <laughs> but he's just like, man, this is, this is silly. Charlie, you talked about the wussification of America earlier in the show. This mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. contributing to the wussification yes. of Don't America. Don't call the cops after a foul. Th this, we need to take his basketball card away from him. He he should never be allowed to play basketball again Man in card. his life. Man, Man card. card and basketball card. Man he should never card. be able to – never be allowed to play basketball again in his life. Man card. Very stupid. Just either, either throw hands or leave. If you throw hands, you're going to gain some respect. Don't call the police. Make man. them put some respect on your Don't name. Don't call the police in now, a pickup game. Now, That's if you throw, well, I guess it depends. If it's completely mutual, calling the cops wouldn't really be great. But if one person throws hands and the other doesn't, then you could call the cops. If you were getting beaten up without any retaliation, then you could charge that person with assault. Fair. But until then, let's, you know, come on. 
Come on. Man, folks, uh, folks just like calling police on people lately. It's weird. Charlie, I heard uh, you did this when you played basketball during high school. I did. I was – so genuinely, when I play ball, I was a, a pretty big complainer. I won't lie. Uh, color me shocked. <laughs> I like – one thing that I really liked doing was – and I did this on a few different occasions throughout my – you know, from the time I was a kid until I quit playing uh, – was baiting guys into getting texts or into fouling me. Like I, I remember one time in particular, I got in a dude's face and said, you know, said something until he, he pushed me and then he got a tech and I laughed about it. Oh. And I got to go take a free throw. Charlie, so you were the I Anderson Veragile of, <laughs> of basketball. That's what Anderson Veragile – that's what he did. Charlie, you would have caught some yeah. hands. Yeah, I was I was that and I you know, and, and I was just like really when I when I was younger, I got you know, I got to about six foot in the middle of high school, but when I was younger I was just like a little tiny pipsqueak point guard. Well if you if if you are tiny, that means that you would be a perfect bunk mate. Just like Nick Saban would be. Ah, yes. When Prue was asked why would if you admit you, that, Charlie? If, if you had to bunk <laughs> with another SC coach, who would you pick? And he said Nick Saban because he's the smallest. How about that? I wanted Nick Pruitt, Saban to get asked about that. Pruitt has some. He has some. He has some humor there. He does. He just doesn't. He just doesn't show it, um, you know, in public, I guess. But he has some humor. There's, there's no way that you can recruit today if you don't show some humor. If you are not cool and laid back. back when you need to be. When you're in the office, when you're with the recruit or you with the recruit's parents, you cannot be the same person that we see Pruitt be uh, in the media and Nick Saban. Those guys are different. I'm telling you that right now. You've seen it with Nick Saban. He has these odd moments where where you see a glimpse into, oh, he's like having fun. Oh, look, he's smiling. What is – He's dancing. Why? What is this? What is this Nick Saban? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's get to the phones. And uh, who are we bringing in? We've got Chip. Chip, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. How hey. are we doing today? Hey, Chip. Great. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Just uh, real quick, one thing I took from yesterday, the media days, uh, a lot of the analysts talking about the talent level at Tennessee versus a Florida. And I guess I'm just not. I've just been. I just started following recruiting. I guess the past what couple of years. I just don't see how Florida has more talent than Tennessee does. When you look at the game that was played last year, and I understand last year was the year they had all the kids suspended, right? Yes. Okay. So, you know, I, I guess I get that. But I mean, you know, when you look at it on paper, as far as you know, the the kids that that have been brought in the past what two years. Um, you know, West Virginia and Florida, how do they – do they stack up really that well? Uh, and, I'm, and I'm almost positive that, that Tennessee has the upper hand on the, the coaching staff, with the exception, of course, of Dan Mullen, because he does have a proven record as a head coach, and Pruitt doesn't. But his surrounding pieces, and I put them against just about anybody in the country. I'll hang up and uh, let you guys uh, talk about that. I've said exactly this. I, I don't I, understand the love for Florida right I, now. I think where you see it is in people are looking at recruiting rankings because you can specifically look at Florida's wide receivers. Look at Freddie Swain, Tyree Cleveland, Jacob Copeland, um, the the guy that came on this last year. I can't think of his name right now. He's a little short guy. Played in the slot a lot. Oh, the, quick, uh, the real quick, the fast yeah. one. Yeah, it's not the, Tyus. Uh, no, that you're thinking of. Ty, I'm thinking of Tyree Cleveland. Oh, maybe. Um, I, there was another one though. No, I mean they got a bunch of them. But my point is, all those guys are four and five star guys from the state of Florida. Versus where, if you look at Tennessee's receivers, Brandon Johnson, a three star. Marquez Callaway was barely a four star. Uh, Josh Palmer, a three star. So I think that's where people are just kind of assuming unfairly. Kadarius that, Tony. Is what yes, Kadarius Tony. That's yeah. who I was thinking. That that kid's a baller. Um, I think that could be not necessarily the end all be all, but that's uh, where a lot of it is coming from. You look on the defensive line: C.C. Jefferson, Jabari Zuniga, big time, big time recruits. Versus where Tennessee, yeah, you have Shot Tuttle, you have Kyle, Kyle Phillips, but after that, I mean, guys like Matthew Butler. Um, they weren't very highly recruited. Kingston Harris, those guys weren't highly recruited. So I think maybe that's where a lot of it stems from because the Josh Palmers, the Brandon Johnsons, people outside of Tennessee fans and people who cover Tennessee don't really know those guys versus where everybody knows who Jacob Copeland, Tyree Cleveland, um, everybody knows Freddie Swain when they step foot on campus versus where 
Brandon Johnson, Josh Palmer, those guys, they have to make a play on the field versus for them to come conference relevant, if that makes sense. So I think it stems from that, and then it just kind of takes off from there, in my opinion. I think I think fans could easily do that. I don't think the, the SC analysts are just looking at recruiting rankings and, and, and making that – um, <coughs> making those statements. I think when you look at Florida's roster, and this is where we have to take a step back, uh, take off our orange colored sunglasses here and look at this. When you look at Florida's receivers, they're adding Van, Van Jefferson, uh, Tyree Cleveland, Freddie Swain, uh, Kadaris Tony, who is one of the quickest dudes in the conference. That wide receiver group from top to bottom. Dre Massey, Josh Amon. They, they – have done more than Tennessee's wide receivers. They are probably more more talented right now than Tennessee wide receivers. Um, doesn't mean they'll be more productive, but they probably they probably are more more talented from top to bottom right right now. You look at Florida and the players that they that they have. They got some really good players. They have probably more developed talent. Than Tennessee has, they have more de- again. Keyword: developed talent than Tennessee, especially on the defensive side of the football. They're always going to have great DBs. Them and LSU have been going back and forth about who's DBU. They both have great DBs. That's not going to change. Florida has really good uh, DBs. Uh, they had a good group of um, you know potential potential quarterbacks. Uh, I think Felipe Franks has tools to be successful. Um, I am. I will say I I'm. I'm skeptical of Todd Grantham with that defense, and they're switching from a four three to a three four, just like Tennessee. That's that's fine. But we talking about we talking about talent that they that they have. Yeah. And Dan Mullen, because of Miss because of Dan Mullen, Mississippi State is in a position to make a little run there in the West because of that defensive front, because of the developed quarterback and developed players. Dan Mullen has taken three star players, not forced them to play early. And use that time to develop them, so that way, when they're sophomores, juniors, seniors, they're ready to go. That, that's where Mississippi State is right now. Moorhead is walking to a really good situation. Also, consider this, people: Florida has not had the medical problems that Tennessee has had, so their guys are healthier. Now, they did have some of the same weight room issues, where you didn't have the discipline in the weight room. That's been documented. So. It's not really crazy to say that Florida has more talent than Tennessee right now. Y'all know what that means? It means absolutely nothing on who wins the game. It's who executes the best. It's who um, has the best team chemistry, the best leadership, who has the most fight, who's mentally tougher. That's what wins football games. Yeah, talent is important, but the talent is not – the gap is not wide enough between Tennessee and Florida's talent that – Talent alone will be the reason why Florida wins this game. It's not. Now, Georgia and maybe Alabama or Alabama and maybe Georgia, absolutely. The talent may be – the gap may be wide. But Tennessee and Florida, the talent gap is not wide at all. But if you ask me which team has more talent and I had to pick an answer without saying anything else, saying Tennessee or Florida, I would probably say Florida. But that doesn't mean that Florida's going to win. That doesn't guarantee you anything. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think Florida is more talented than Tennessee. Yeah, but it's not, it's not leaps and bounds, I though. Don't, yeah. And what kind of offsets that, in my opinion, is that the game is in Neyland Stadium. That, that's a huge factor. Um, I, don't think, I don't think it matters. I, I think it does to a ex- certain extent, especially if a guy like Emory Jones. I mean, that could be his first start, and it comes in a place like Neyland Stadium. Yeah. Against a Jeremy Pruitt it, defense, I think that does it, matter. It, it could if he plays, but the mindset of the Florida players, they're not intimidated by Neyland Stadium. They've won 11 out of the last 12 times. They come up here, and they, you know, they've beaten Tennessee. The one time where the crowd caused Florida problems was in the 2016 season when Derrick Barnett was getting after the quarterback uh, there in their own end zone because Callaway was, you know, filling the ball uh, inside the 10 like a big dummy. And so, yes, we we had plenty of uh, pre-snap disruptions in that football game. I remember. I do think a, a big factor going into this game, though, is how the West Virginia game goes in terms of how how the crowd will be. Neyland Stadium is going to be awesome no matter what. But let's say somehow Tennessee beats West Virginia. That's going to be a totally different atmosphere 
than if Tennessee gets rolled over by West Virginia by 30 points. I don't think it's going to matter either way. Uh, I, I think it, it matters in the sense of the fact that, in my opinion, I think this of any sport – you would just rather play a home game for the simple fact that it's it's your building. Yeah. It's for the Tennessee players. Um, you're used to the ball wall going into the locker room. You kind of, you have your own routine, and especially when Tennessee coach Pruitt mentioned it yesterday. Thirty newcomers, you get kind of get in a groove of this will be their third straight home game. I think that's an advantage versus where Florida. It may not affect them on the field, but it does throw off their routine. And to some players, it does affect them when when maybe you're not going through your home routine. I, I, mean, I, I do think that is a thing. It won't be the deciding factor in the game, but I, I do think it m- makes a difference. There's a, there's a difference between home and away, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, Florida has not been intimidated yeah, by right. coming to Neal yeah. Stadium over the, over the last couple of years. And sure. I know it's a new coach, but, ag- again, we, got, we have to understand that if uh, we don't have that home field advantage like we used to. You know, we, the, 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 the Oklahoma game – was unbelievable. The Florida game there in the second half was unbelievable. But Neyland Stadium, when Neyland Stadium was at its best, every game was like that. Every home game was like that. We have to get back to that. And it's going to take us whooping people's butt to get back to that. We're not there yet. And that's why yet. I say I, I think it is actually not not just for the home crowd, but if I think the, the excitement around that game will be so much more if Tennessee, even so much as really gives West Virginia a great run, you know, maybe has a lead in the fourth quarter, but ends up losing still. Like I, I think that the, I think the excitement for the team is more at that point, but also the confidence from Tennessee's football team at that point is much more because I think the a sense of we're a real competitor would be instilled in the team, and they come into this Florida game with more confidence. I just, I just can't believe that what Tennessee does against West Virginia is going to affect the crowd against Florida. Like, no, no, no matter. If you win against West Virginia or lose against West Virginia, the first five minutes of that Florida game is it's going to determine. Yeah, it's going to determine kind of the the trajectory of that game. If you come out and you start making plays, yeah, man, the crowd's in it from from the opening kickoff. And if you continue to make plays, the crowd's going to be in it. They'll get louder and louder and louder. But if you come out and you start sputtering, whether you whatever you did against West Virginia won't matter. Because if you come out sputtering, the crowd's not going to be into it as much. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I just say, I think that. I, I'm with Swain on this one for the simple fact that it's Florida. It's I mean, Florida. It's, yeah. it's Jeremy oh, you're Pruitt's. Right. You're right. It's Jeremy Pruitt's first conference yeah. game, and nonetheless, first conference game at home, and it's against Florida. Um, I, I just kind of think, regardless of how the West Virginia game goes, um, is, even if Tennessee gets blown out by West Virginia, the fans are still going to show up for the Florida game. We yeah. see it yeah. every single time. And if we jump on Florida early, the place will go nuts. This, Exactly. And Win or lose against West Virginia is, is how yes. is how is how I feel there. Let's uh, get to Jay. Jay, good morning. Guys, good morning, man. Good morning, Jay. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I got a little bit of a, I guess, I don't know if you call it Hollywood ball kind of trivia, but <coughs> have y'all seen the uh, <laughs> the movie Blow with Johnny Depp where he played Boston George? He was yep. Pablo Escobar's right hand man. Yep. I have, yeah. Yep. I got it on DVD. Did you know Boston George played football at UT on scholarship? Hmm. Really? Boston, Boston George is the BFL. Hmm. Did not know that. Yeah, so I'm watching a YouTube interview of Boston George, the actual Boston George on uh, on YouTube. They're interviewing him. And um, uh, it's, about a, it's about a 45-minute interview, but within the first minute, he was like, you know, how did you get into – you know, to selling marijuana. You started selling marijuana at first. How'd you get in that? Within the first minute, he said, yeah, I, uh, you know, I went to the University of Tennessee. Wait a uh, minute. But it, it Wait a minute. dropped out for drinking too much. And then I looked up and it said he, I looked up and read this little uh, biography about him, said that not only did he go to the University of Tennessee, he went there on a full scholarship to play football. Wait a minute now, Jay. Wait a minute. Wait. Hey, Swain, it, it comes right out of the man's mouth. You can watch the interview on YouTube. I mean, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go check. I'm gonna go check that out, man. I I had never heard that before. That's that's. I'll, I'll send you the link on Twitter. Okay. okay? Uh, and and just but all you have to do is just Boston George, you know, interview or something. And it's about a 45 minute interview, 
and it's and it's within the first minute he talks about going to the University of Tennessee. Man, he what? says I went in another interview. He said I went to several colleges: University of Tennessee, University of Southern Mississippi. Yep. In those days, I Good was I was a high school jock. I did not. I did not see Tennessee. I saw the University of Southern Miss. But man, I got to go see that. I don't know if we need to be claiming him. And, you know. You know, like 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 like. You know, he's he's a a, a positive. Um, you know, figure, but he, but but I did not know that about about uh, Boston George. I remember that movie, uh, one of my favorite movies, actually. Google uh, Boston George, Tennessee, and I think maybe the first one that'll come up or the second one, it'll talk about him playing football at Tennessee on full scholarship. Yeah, this hmm. this website says he was a product of a upper middle class family in Massachusetts, and then he attended Tennessee on a football scholarship, uh, but quickly dropped out. And went to Southern Miss. Hmm. How about that, man? Ain't that crazy? That is crazy. Hey, I, yeah, I thought I'd <laughs> share that with y'all, man. I thought That's that a very crazy. interesting I did not, tidbit. I did not know that. <laughs> wow. Well, Boston George, who would have thought? I. And SEC, guy, not surprising right? though, right? Huh? I said it's not surprising, man. He 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 can, he played in the SEC. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's wild down here. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. What were you gonna say? Ain't no choir boys down here. You don't see that in the Big Ten. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, you don't, man. You don't. Big Ten, Big Ten, they go and uh, eat their mama's apple pie and go work at an insurance agency or something. You don't see that like that. It SEC's gets too wild for it all gets that. serious down here, man. That's that's right, man. That's right. Yeah. Well, hey, man, I thought I'd just share that with y'all. I thought that was pretty interesting. Hey, thank you. Really appreciate the phone call. Dropping nuggets this morning, Jay. Appreciate that. That's good stuff. Yeah, we can't claim him though. So that's, that might be one we leave off the record books. Yeah. I mean, because we always like finding any small, any reason to, to claim someone to make them evolve. Like y'all trying to do with Drake. Well, the, the new popular one is is uh, the wrestler Steamboat. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I've been seeing that, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, his his wife is a, is a Tennessee, I think he said Tennessee grad, and Huge Tennessee fan. Hey, did you know uh, John Gruden's wife was a cheerleader at Tennessee? <laughs> <laughs> you know they they, I you know they, they own land at, here? Yeah, they're looking Son at property Son goes to school here, too. Who <laughs> Who is John Gruden? John did, Gruden. Did you see yesterday, this is a funny tidbit, the New York Islanders, the hockey team, uh, hired John Gruden, but it's J-O-H-N Gruden yesterday as an assistant coach. A, a, a totally different person. <laughs> That's <Dang. pretty> hilarious. <laughs> we need to hit the dump button, so... Any talk of John Gruden does not go out on the air, man. <laughs> no. No John Gruden. Still got to change that dang attaboy intro. Seth. Swain and Vin, Be right back. Hour three of the Swain event is brought to you by the Low T Center and LowTCenter.com. Do you know your numbers? Feel like you again. Let us help. There is a 30% chance of rain today, partly sunny with a high of 89 and a low around 69. Georgia sucks. Tomorrow, there is a 40% chance of showers, partly sunny with a high around 89 and a low near 70. Pollock's a whiny girl. Saturday, showers and thunderstorms likely, mostly cloudy with a high in the mid-80s. Air Murray's clueless. Weather on the Swain event is brought to you by Be Dry. If your basement is wet or cracked, Be Dry can help. BeDry.com. Craving homemade flavors that don't take hours in the kitchen? Mrs. Grissom's cheese spreads and chicken salads are the perfect go-to. Ready-to-eat meals and snacks found in the meat or dairy section at the grocery store with flavors of home in every bite. Whether you crave the classic Mrs. Grissom's pimento cheese or the gold gluten-free select cranberry pecan chicken salad, enjoy the sweet taste of a home-cooked meal in every container. Select the best. Select Mrs. Grissom's. Small town, small town. Top 100 Barbecue Restaurant Dead End Barbecue has a new slew of daily specials. Enjoy a different special meal every day, like the Chipotle Chicken Salad, the Chicken Tender Sandwich, or the Kitchen Sink Burrito filled with brisket, full pork, and chicken. Not to mention queso, jalapenos, and more. It's called the Kitchen Sink for a reason. Dead End isn't stopping at your plate, though. Be sure to check out their new summer drink offerings, including the Big Orange Crush, My Clementine, or the Tequila Squirt. There is always something new at Dead End Barbecue. Located off of Sutherland Avenue, Dead End Barbecue. The summer flavor search is over. Do you have cracks in your foundation? 
a wet basement, or a nasty, leaky crawl space? Our listeners have heard about them on the Swain event for over a year, and now it's time to make the call. Give Be Dry Waterproofing and Foundation Repair the opportunity to fix your home's problem. Since 1958, that's right, nearly 60 years, Be Dry has been solving basement, crawl space, and foundation problems throughout the country. Be Dry only uses high quality materials from reputable manufacturers. They back their installations with some of the best warranties in the industry to provide homeowners with added peace of mind. They are truly an A company. Whenever you start experiencing a wet basement, leaky crawl space, or a cracked foundation, remember these three words Better call Be Dry. Reach out to Be Dry today at 865 662 5238 to schedule your free appointment. That's 865 662 5238. Remember, better call B Dry. If you've ever had surgery, you may have experienced sticker shock when you received all of your bills. There's one for the surgeon, one for the facilities, one for anesthesia. The list goes on and on, and it can be totally overwhelming. Thankfully, Premier Surgical Associates offers a different way. Premier offers packages for laparoscopic gallbladder and select hernia procedures performed at the Premier Surgery Center on Paper Mill Drive. It's one price, one bill, and you know the total cost up front. It's exceptional care at an affordable price. Visit PremierSurgeryPackages.com right now to find out more about all of the excellent services that they offer. Premier Surgical Associates, expertise you can trust. VFL's Jason Swain and Todd Kelly here with our Men on Football and Smoothie segment. Let's discuss some of our favorite smoothies and how they impact our lives. TK. Man, tell me which smoothie comes to mind when you think about playing defense. Swaino, the Peanut Butter Power Plus and the Power Punch Plus provide the energy needed to make plays every time they take the field. Then you have the Gladiator and the Hulk. Nutrition every dominant player has to have. Bottom line, everyone wants to be a dominant player. Now, Swain, you tell me about the offensive side of the ball. TK, it's simple. You always score with Smoothie King. The shredder personifies what we are going to do to opposing defenses. The berry punch and activator will light up the scoreboard. And in case we need to go into overtime, the pure recharge will put us over the top for the win. Swaino, you know I love football and Smoothie King. I'm a VFL, a Smoothie King for life. The chocolate gladiator and the chocolate shredder with the scoop of peanut butter. Oh, that's my go-to smoothie. They get a chest bump all day. Yes, sir. This concludes our Men on Football and Smoothie King segment for today. Don't forget the Sip by Sip program. Use Smoothie King as a meal replacement five or more times a week, and you will feel and see the difference. Smoothie King, the healthy alternative to fast food. Delicious and nutritious. TK, don't forget the peanut butter. Yeah, boy. Uh, Larry, he on Facebook Live comment says that uh, Paul Fonbon has been really quiet about the hire. You didn't say it right. I'm sorry. Paul. Paul has been really quiet about the hire till he signed his new contract. He showed his ball card yesterday. Haven't seen that in a while. That's probably that's probably why Paul Fonbon was so fired up yesterday. He just got paid. New contract from from uh, ESPN. Uh, Kevin said, "Did y'all hear Alan Kamara sing?" Yeah, there at the uh, ESPYS on stage. He was. He's having a good time, showing off that personality. That is that is so uh, that is so famous. Everyone knows about uh, Alvin Alvin Kamara's personality. So, but I did I did see that. Uh, sadly, he did not win Breakout Player Athlete of the Year. They, they went to Donovan Mitchell. How can Donovan Mitchell, who deserves it, let's be win the Breakout Player of the Year over Ben Simmons? Yet Ben Simmons won Rookie of the Year in the NBA. Hmm. Shouldn't it be one or the other? Like, one of the guys should win both of the awards? Which, Donovan Mitchell, my rookie of the year. Ben Simmons, not my rookie of the year. I agree with you there. I mean, that's a, that's an interesting take. I mean, was Ben Simmons even a, 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 a nominee for Breakout Athlete of the Year? It was him, Kamara, Simmons, Kamara, uh, Donovan Mitchell, and somebody else. Well, that, that explains it. I mean, it's, it's, it's voters. One is ESPN, the other is uh, NBA. Well, I mean, I, I know why. One is I just right, think one it's, is wrong. I just think it's funny. Yeah. The fans were kind of right in this instance in terms of picking Donovan Mitchell over Ben Simmons, but they should have voted for Alvin Kamara. I didn't think Alvin was going to win because he got Drew Brees, and Donovan did more for the Utah Jazz yeah. than Alvin did for the Saints. 
He had more on his shoulders. And and Ben Simmons, too. Well, and so. when it's a fan vote, the real question is, is Alvin more popular than those two? Uh, without a doubt. You think? Because I would say – I think that, I think Donovan Mitchell and Ben Simmons is more popular. We hear about Alvin all the time because we talk about him all the time. But from a national perspective, no, I, I think Donovan Mitchell and Ben Simmons are more popular. Hey, man, I've seen, I've seen Alvin on national shows – he has a good person. He has a great personality. If you I've ask, I've seen Mitchell more, a ton since if you the ask, end of the season. If you ask a we, large, we, a large group of people, like a, a random selection of Americans across the country, I think more would know Alvin because it's the NFL. The NFL is the most popular sports league think, in the world. Like, I think you're, I think you're underselling how popular the NBA is. I know well, the NFL is more popular, but the NBA is not. NFL, not even close. Think, After think, this past season. Think about the market that, that uh, Donald Mitchell is in, too. Check those ratings. I mean, you check the, those ratings. You, I, dude, t- when you compare, play, like, NFL playoff I'm, no, games. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about comparing the NFL to the NBA ratings. I'm talking about NFL viewership went down a lot this year. It did. That's what I was that's referring true. to. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yes, NFL out. Blew blew out the NBA. I was referring to what the NFL declined this year. So I, I'm I'm saying with that decline, that could have hurt Kamara's pop, popularity. Don, Donovan, Donovan plays for the Utah Jazz, so he's not in a big market either. Yeah. So they don't get a lot of attention. Utah Jazz don't get a lot of attention at all. Now Ben Simmons plays for a big market team with Philadelphia, so you get a little bit more coverage on national you know, on national stage. But I said, I mean, that's an interesting question. I mean, between you know Kamara and, and Donovan Mitchell, who is more popular? I, I I'm going to say Alvin Kamara, but um, I don't really know. I really do not know who's more popular. Eight six five two hundred fifty five zero three B Drive Waterproofing Hotline. Anything on the text box? Uh, we did have someone mention something about Trey Smith being reinstated officially. Um, I guess publicly by, by, by Pruitt yesterday, we have dropped some nuggets over the last few weeks that he he would be okay, that he would be back, more than likely he would be back, the same way we've dropped nuggets about J.J. Peterson being okay and joining this, joining this team at some point during July and, and being uh, ready to rock and roll. Um, for fall camp, and so that all happened uh, officially yesterday when Jeremy Pru was asked about that. I I did see some comments from uh, Rush Probes about what happened in Georgia. Uh, it was from Dan Harrelson's uh, Twitter account, and Dan always does a really good job of, of reaching back and, and talking to those folks that 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 knew uh, Pru. At Hoover and, and knows him now. Um, but this is what Rush Probst said right quick. Uh, they were a little bit more country club and lackadaisical at UGA before. I know they had some successful teams, but the weight room wasn't very tough. Practice wasn't very tough. Jeremy has a way to make things tough. That is Rush Probst. John Probst, former Tennessee player, says when things get tough, it isn't comfortable. He is the uh, nephew of Rush Brooks there. Play here in Tennessee. Have a great day for Ben McKee, Charlie Burst, and Jason Swain. Peace and love. We're out. All right, team, listen up. It's tailgating time again in Tennessee. But most importantly, This podcast of the Swain event is brought to you by InsureFit RM for all of your auto, home, life, and business.